Welcome to Miss Martin Muses. Welcome to Miss Martin Muses, where we muse upon what makes me laugh, makes me cry, makes me happy, makes me sad, or just really ticks me off. Well, guess what? Guess what? Today we are going to talk about a season of Once Upon a Time that hits every single one of those emotions. It's a miracle. It's a Christmas miracle. And I am joined today by my nerdy home, aka Stephanie. Hi. Hi. I'm glad to be doing this again. Yes, we are very, very excited for reasons about this season. And to my left, the anti-snow, a.k.a. Biggles Mets. Welcome Hi, everybody. Hi. If, if snow's involved, I hate it. Uh, well, <laughs> I, I might, you might hear a few dissenting opinions from me today. Well, I want to say hi to, hello, welcome everyone that's coming in. We have our animals. We like our animals here at Miss Martin Music, Nordic Cupid's Cooper. Thank you, TD. Oh, look, and it's the Minority Home, Stephanie and Keck, a mod with the most. Thank you for modding tonight. And Alex McCarthy, season two is awesome. I actually do agree. I am very excited about talking about season two today. And let's just jump right into this. Let's just jump right into this. The last time when we ended with season one, Rumpelstiltskin brought back magic. And it was like, magic is coming. And then magic was here. And they, they all have their memories back. And then, boom, they just start right into it where they are having their reunions. I want to start yeah. today with Steph yeah, Stephanie. What did you think of the reunions as they all woke up and saw each other? Uh, I loved them. I loved all of them. Uh, my favorite is obviously when, you know, Snow and David uh, see Emma again. I love how when David hugs Emma, he's always cradling her head. Uh, because the last time he saw her, she was a baby. So anytime he hugs her or anything like that, he's always cradling her head. Uh, if it, it feels almost as if like he still sees her as a as a as a newborn, you know, he has to carefully handle. Oh her. oh oh gosh! So like, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Um. <laughs> yeah. Almost I'm sorry, my she's she's still a newborn. He has to just carefully handle her, handle her with care, you know, with with gentle baby hands, like just. I love it. Every time he holds her, he hugs her. He's crying. He's always he always has her head. It's it's mm -hmm. so beautiful. I love it. I love that. I love when he does that. Yes, it it was very moving. And I apologize, my sound echoed off everywhere, <laughs> right in the middle of that beautiful thing. But yes, it's like this is baby, and <laughs> yeah. and you you really felt the pain with them because they didn't get to raise her. They lost yeah. that. And so, uh, the, the one thing that like, totally, I don't know. I don't know if you felt this Biggles because you have such a hatred for snow, but, or maybe it was just like the line delivery, but the way she says you found us, I, I didn't <laughs> like that line delivery. I thought it took away from the moment. I thought that she should have just said nothing at all. You know, snow is very good at ruining the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yes, yes and no. I, I, I know what you're talking about because they were all kind of crying. They were very yeah. moved. And I agree about the delivery. It it almost makes you laugh out loud at a moment where you don't really feel like you should be laughing uh -huh. out loud. Yeah. Um, but um, it, it, absolutely. I love that reunion. And also how confused Emma was because... She had yeah, always she just gotten her memories. Yeah. Well, they've only gotten their memories. And also, like, her and Snow, they've been living as roommates, you know, and not mother That's and daughter. True. And so now it's Snow kind of like, like that. changing that dynamic with Emma as well. Yeah. I mean, they shared stories about their sexual exploits for yeah. crying out loud. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Alex McCarthy says, when Henry called Charming Grandpa. Yes. Oh, I love that. that. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. And then they, that was a good delivery. And it reminds you, oh, yeah, they're, they're yeah, they, young, just but a, they're, they're related. Because you yeah. just, you you hear it off, off screen, you know, because mm -hmm. they're hugging Emma. And you just hear this little tiny voice, Grandpa. It's so good. 
Um, yeah. It's so good. And then they laugh because it's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> we don't just get Emma. We get her child as well. You know, this is this is our grandchild, which is amazing as well. Yeah. The theme of family, I think, especially was very prevalent here. Not just fathers and uh, fathers and sons, mothers and daughters, but grandparents mm -hmm. and grandchildren. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, welcome everyone coming in. My gosh, Biggles, people are, they're giving you a hard time in the chat here. Biggles. That is not me. true. That is defamatory. I'm coming for you, Calman. Yeah. And, and someone else, well, I can't read what Dan Blackroyd said. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well uh, that's, that's a, it's a joke because I sent the super chat to Lyndon saying that Lyndon loves it. And we got Lyndon to be like, oh, thanks, Biggles. And then he's like, Lyndon loves. And then he said it, you know. So uh, it's hilarious. And then we also got Rhino to say that he loves it. Mm. And now they just say it for me. So I'm just like, whatever, I'll say it. I don't care. <laughs> okay, well, we know stream, that you, I you love say ketchup on, on pizza, no, but you, absolutely not. you love it almost as much as you love Snow White. Uh, it's I actually hate that more than I hate Snow White. And it's, uh, it's only because of this season that she's able to stay above pizza on ketchup. And uh, it's because she shoots the ogre in the eye. But you know what? She should have told Emma beforehand because, like she says, I've been here. You haven't. Uh, so why didn't you just tell her, hey, they're, cy they, they're Cyclops. You got to shoot them in the eye. She, mm -hmm. she waited till after she shot him in the eye. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's true. They could have helped us out a little bit. Well, I, I am completely with Steph about that is my favorite reunion at this moment. What was yours, uh, Biggles? Well, I'm a, a Bell and Rumpel guy. So it was that when she's like, oh, I remember who you are. I was like, yay. Oh, then, well, yeah, I'm Rumble, Rumble all the way. Um, they did have that. And he's like, I love you, too. And they get to kiss for the first time, like the first kiss that didn't get uh, interrupted with him wigging out and going crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I feel, I, I cringe at their kisses. I don't, I don't know why. Is it because he's old and she's young? <laughs> no, I don't know. Oh. That's not why. Uh, I figured that was why. <laughs> no, it's not that at all. I don't, maybe it's because I don't like how she says rumple. Every time when she says rumple, it's like rumple. Oh gosh. Yeah. I have some things to say about Belle in this season. And Belle is, of course, a character that I love, but I have an issue. That's it's because she's Belle. Lacey. Well, no, yeah, actually, she's Lacey. Lacey, For a little bit. I like Lacey too, as much as I mind some of the other things. But I, I like that reunion scene with him and Belle because you see the rage that Rumpel has. And we'd been looking forward to this. The rage that he has about about what Regina did to her, and she decides that I'm sorry. Rather, she tells Rumpel, "Oh, you know, don't get revenge." And he's like, "Uh, okay, yeah, I promise I won't kill her." Yeah, yes, he like, promised. Oh, kill this <laughs> this woman. Sorry. Yeah. Well, no, exactly, exactly. But but yeah, that's good. Um, I'm I'm. I just love the 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 charming family reunion. Also, right after that, the seven dwarves are there and they bow before their queen. The seven dwarves, yeah. The dwarves are so lame. Oh, no. I still don't know which one's bashful and which one's dopey and which one's. Uh, you don't know which one, one dopey is. Gets... He's he's then... even wearing a a purple. Uh, yeah, but that other guy had a per that other dwarf had like a purple hat, like it was a purple like. So I figured maybe no, one of those were. Beanie. Yeah, yeah, but the other Dopey one has like a, a purple hat thing. But Dopey wears but a purple beanie, and he's always like trying to eat the snow. He's super dopey. Is he really? I don't even yeah. realize that. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you I go. <laughs> I don't like the dwarf, so I ignore them. <laughs> the best dwarf died. Okay. Rest in peace, uh, stealthy. 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 I love <laughs> Stealthy, yeah. Well, I like Bashful because the actor is so adorable. He, Which he, one's he's Bashful? a really good guy. No, da Bashful, he he's actually of Filipino heritage. And oh, so he's the he's the one who has that other hat, that other purple hat on. Well, is he the bald one? 
Uh, yes, he is. He is bald, and he doesn't usually say a lot. Mm -hmm. But like, I I think it's mainly because of the actor is just so nice and awesome, and he did like this big fundraising thing where he took all these presents to all these kids in the Philippines for Christmas. So I'm yeah. like, Dopey's awesome. Even though, I mean, Dopey, duh. Bashful. 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 I, yeah, he's so awesome I said the wrong name. But, um, yeah, he's a good guy. He doesn't say a lot. And, well, there's, of course, Grumpy, who is the, the dude from Pirates of the Caribbean. And, yeah. And then there's Happy, the, the the dwarf who shall not be named because of some controversy with one of the actresses. Oh. <laughs> that was hilarious. It, it was one of the best fun I've ever had. Wait, what happened? Yeah, I don't know what happened. Oh, you I, didn't I know need, that? I need to know this story because I have no idea anything about like the behind the scenes. Okay, now this, so this, actually, this happened very publicly. It was brilliant. Uh, the, the actor, well, I, I don't want to gossip about the actors, but this was public. And there were some people that liked uh, something called uh, a ship called Swan Queen. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And I this, have no idea what that this means, two bit actor, well, this basically, this extra, which is basically what he was, said on Twitter, Swan Queen is stupid. And Lana and Emma say that, uh, sorry, Lana and uh, what's her name? Jennifer Morrison say that all the time. And the actresses were not one little bit happy, especially Jennifer Morrison. Uh -oh. We were like, "You do not talk to our my fans like this." She said it publicly. It was, it was so much fun actually. Uh, we were all sitting there popping popcorn because, yeah, it was very inappropriate. And it's like, so they even wrote that joke into the show about season four, I think, where Charming's like, "Yeah, we all know how much Emma loves Happy," <laughs> and it was referring to that incident. Oh yeah. Well, Happy got to talk in season two, does doesn't he? He like oh, he's I'm like sure drinks he are on me when they're in the mines, right? Oh, I'm sure he did. Yeah, one? he's. I, yeah. I have no idea who said drinks are on me. No, that <laughs> yeah. was him. Or no, yeah. Leroy said drinks are unhappy. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, sort of poop is. I think he says it best here. We have. Grumpy, dopey, doc, happy, bashful, sneezy, sleepy, loopy, booby, jerky, and scoopy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's how much we love him. But that was a great moment. That was a great reunion uh, after they are both. And I think that's the only good one. The memories of Red, your girlfriend, uh, the anti-snow there. you got lots of girlfriends I, on this. Yeah, you she's, really she's, love Red. She's got, she's got my heart. Yeah, and Granny. Aww. Yeah, we saw that, and and that was good. But, my gosh, when Rumpel went to see Regina, because Regina was in jail. Mm -hmm. and... oh, yeah, that was intense. I thought he was going to just smirk her right there. I was like, do it. Yeah. Forget and just what so... Belle says. She won't even find out. Exactly. Murker. It, it, I, he probably should have done that, and it, but I just loved it because he was like, you know, Bell, and she's like, oh, Bell's alive, thank God, or something, and he's like, don't even, <laughs> don't even. Um, well, and that's when we find out that Regina, for some reason, doesn't have her magic, even though magic is there, and she tries to use it. Yeah, she's she tries like, to use went, it. You went to see your queen. Well, here she is, and they're all, here's what, <laughs> exactly. exactly. Yeah, yeah. So those were those are some some great reunions, um, and then everything, of course, goes straight to hell. Uh, and it was wasn't it Snow's fault? I, Everything's I think, always Snow's fault. Yeah, yes, because Rumpel hating uh, trying to get around his promise to Bell, he summons this uh, wraith. Yeah, this, wraith. Yeah, this wraith. And it was really, it wasn't just a normal wraith. It was a Quixin or something. It was a Chinese word and summons it. And they, they try to capture, isn't it they try to capture? Oh, yeah, because they try to send it down a portal. So they take uh, the Mad Hatter's hat and make this portal and then Emma falls in. That's what happens. And then Snow jumps in after. And then her. Snow oh. jumps in. Yeah, I'm yeah. not gonna lose her. Not again. But and it wasn't for Charming. He didn't quite make it. 
So poor charming. But you know what? If charming wasn't uh, stayed back, I love uh, that. That part would made me Regina laugh. Regina and some other stuff. I think charming without snow is way better than charming with snow. Charming oh without snow is extremely confused all the time. Uh, yeah, I, but he's better. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Um, uh, but I, I will think, hear uh, you out, Biggles. I laugh so much because he's like, I'm right behind you, or you're not going without me. And then he just, yeah, flat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, one could argue it wasn't Snow's fault, it was Bell's fault because Bell was being such a nag. And I remember going, Since when is Bell a nag? She's like, and, and then when Rumpelstiltskin over here, uh, says to Snow and all them and, and Emma, yeah, I did it. So what? And then Bell's like, I thought you changed. And he goes, what? In the hour since you've met me? <laughs> since you've uh. known me? And I thought, touche, that was good. And she's like, ah. And then she runs off. And mm -hmm. I'm like, like, Bell, what happened to you, you whiny little witch? <laughs> it's like she what part kind of, of, of the dark one don't you understand <laughs> that's she has that issue she's just uh naively blinded by her love for rumple and thinking that he can change um throughout the series it's not just like this episode and yeah. it's not until you know the very the very Season end six when and he's seven. Just, yeah when he's finally like actually doing it for her um, yep. He's finally like kind of appreciating that, like, whoa, she, you know, she's stayed with me through all this and everything. Um, but I think it's 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 not really a change or nothing really changed with her because she's always thought that way, even from you know believing that true love's kiss could change him. You know, she's yeah. always thought that naive idea of uh, love can be greater than whatever he really wants. So she's still in that belief. It's not that she's changed. She's just like, love can, love is the magical cure for everything. And my love is enough for him. And I don't know, sometimes it's not. He has yeah. to realize it on his own. Yeah. Well, and not just realize it on his own. I have this criticism of the writing in some of these seasons he is the dark one. It's not yeah. just something that he could just shake off. And we saw that mm -hmm. when Emma becomes the dark one in season five, it's like, you're, you're under a curse. It's, it's not yeah. just like, uh, it's not just something you can just shake off. And I, I actually fault the writers on that. Uh, They're but, all the dark ones like later on. And yeah. And they're always whispering in the ear and, mm -hmm. and it's an addiction and all that. I think that without having that, it would have worked for Rumpel because it is an addiction for him. The power mm -hmm. on its own is an addiction. They didn't have to like put all the dark ones. That, that well, they crazy. wanted him. They probably wanted him still in the thing in the story, so they add him in Emma's head, and then they're like, "Oh, we're going to add Merlin." So Merlin creates the dark one, and that's that's probably yeah. why they had all the voices in there. So. They can defeat herself, you know. It was so weird. Yeah, dumb, dumb writing. But hey, yeah, very, very whatever. bad writing. And it's either. whatever. But ex yeah. excluding, excluding that, you know, I think I don't think that uh, Belle was weird or anything changed. I think that she was just naively in love with him. Yeah, she needs to grow she is up also a little bit. Fun to look at. Oh well, yeah, Emily the Raven. She's awesome in, in this. And another ongoing joke when she's in Storybrooke is she's always wearing short skirts and, and high really heels. huge high heels. And we're like, what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> like I did not notice high heels. the high yeah, heels. I don't, I don't look past the, you know, the top part, uh, the top <laughs> half. Yeah. She's always wearing, yeah. and it doesn't matter if it's cold. <laughs> or yeah, she's, always <laughs> she's always in a short skirt and high heels it's really it's actually really cute it's like a little staple she's like the sexy librarian <laughs> yeah and and i don't necessarily have a problem with that except for the fact the elephant in the room is she really is a lot younger than the actor the rumpelstiltskin mm -hmm. they have yeah 25 years and i thought it was a very odd choice that they dressed her to where she looked even younger <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I don't think so. I, I don't think so. I mean, I think they dress her appropriately and they can't like make her look frumpy. You know, it's like she latched onto a look that she enjoyed and she just wore it over and over and over. And I every also single enjoyed the look. Every character has their own look. Like Emma's always in like black pants and high high boots and her red what? jacket. Uh, Regina is always in something that's like skin tight skirt that goes past your knees with her boobs showing. Uh, of course. You know. Yeah. And I think the one that dresses most like a grandma would be Snow. Yeah. Well, and they did a terrible and job her, for her later. later. Well, later. The, the girl gains like what? 0.5 pounds after she had her baby. And they're like, okay, let's dress her like she's fat. <laughs> yeah. They dress her in such frumpy Good. clothing. And I don't, I don't like Snow's outfits. I, I, I liked them like when they started out. But she just, they made her look more frumpy and frumpier and frumpier. They gave her more and more like layers of clothing. And I don't understand why they did that. Um, I don't like anything about Snow. Well, yeah. Well, we're, <laughs> I, I'm going to argue with you about Snow a little bit. Uh, but they were, they were banished, if you will. I, I think I titled this theme of, oh my God, just go home already. Or, or we want to go home because, yeah, they got sucked into the Enchanted Forest. And what we didn't know was that as we were seeing what was happening in Storybrook, they were doing mm -hmm. like a flashback forward time different thing with Aurora Mulan and Prince Philip, where what yeah. happened at the beginning of the episode with them is really what happened at the end of the episode. Yeah, and that part, when I first watched that, I was like, what the hell is going on? Yeah, I had, it that was, was one of those so things weird. where afterwards, yeah, we had to just like sit and talk it through. Everyone on the mm -hmm. internet's like, wait, what? Huh? Where? Yeah, it, it's like, okay, everything is happening simultaneously. And then the portal and boom, this is where we're back at the, within the same, at the same time. I, I don't know. It was, it was it so was, confusing yeah. for me when I first watched it. Yeah. Um, it, that I was and, just kind of like, all right. <laughs> yeah, it, it 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 was a little bit messed up. I did enjoy the way that they introduced Sleeping Beauty with him doing the kiss, and you even see the spindle in yeah the, in the corner. But then he wakes up, and <laughs> Aurora is such a bitch. <laughs> oh my god, it's sleeping so, for it's, a very long time. I, it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's Mulan she's, there, and she's like, I love the, that she's not. I, with the characters, I like that they take, you know, certain, they take a lot of liberties with the characters. You know, they make them their own thing. They're not exactly what you think they're going to be. So Aurora is like this really prissy, uh, like, Princess. I've never been out in the woods before. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that type of character. Um, and the look, the actress plays it so well because she's just kind of like, you're a woman. Like, you've been traveling mm -hmm. all this way with with my Philip. <laughs> like, oh, you know, and yeah. she gets, she has the dagger stare and it's so good. Um, but you know that she won't be able to defend herself. She's never picked up a weapon in her life. Um, and she plays it so well. I love that. I really like the actor, the way she portrays that. Yeah. So I've seen season four like four times or whatever. And there's, I think it's Snow and Emma that are walking and they're talking. And in the background, like I never noticed this before, you see Aurora like stalking them. And like, <laughs> yeah, she's like yeah. stalking them and looking at them like she's going to do something. And like, this is like probably my fifth watch through of the show. I watched season two twice because I kept falling asleep during it um, because I watch it at the end of the night. But, uh, I went back and I was like, holy crap, I never noticed that before. I was like, had I noticed that the first watch through, I was like, I would have expected when she attacked uh, Snow or Emma. I don't remember which one it was, but uh, I was like, holy crap. Like, she's stalking them. She's going to do something. And I, it took me like three or four watch throughs to finally catch that. And I think oh, it's yeah. my favorite part of season two is just that <laughs> scene oh. <laughs> where she's hunting. She is hunting. Yeah. 
And there's like that stupid little triangle uh, where um, it's like, you're in love with him. It's like, no, I'm not. Um, and then it doesn't matter because he gets sucked up by the Queen Shen mm -hmm. into goodness knows where. And they're all screaming and stuff. Uh, I, I thought that actually was a lot of fun. And he ended up on New Girl. That's where he got sucked off to. Uh, with, yeah, he did. He the, was on New York, New Girl. New Girl, uh, yeah. I yeah that that whole part where she's just like telling Mulan you're in love with him I you know throwing daggers at her I don't I thought that was kind of dumb <laughs> I, and then yeah. in season three they it like makes it even dumber so it wasn't Philip she was in love with yeah oh, that, well they pulled oh sorry go ahead yeah that part but, I didn't dig too much I was like but back to season two <laughs> yeah they they pulled that one straight out of their buttocks. That's kind of like uh, in Gotham, where like the penguin falls in love with the Riddler, like came out of nowhere. Yeah. Well, so th so they're stuck, and they're mm -hmm. stuck way too friggin' long. <laughs> I, I was agree. I agree. They were really they were stuck for a long time. The only thing that made it uh, worthwhile was Cora and Hook. It, it made oh, it yes. worth it yes. because otherwise, if it was just them for this entire season or whatever, how long they stayed there, it, it would have been unbearable. It would have been unbearable because I I didn't like how long they were stuck. Yeah, and and you got to watch it on a binge. I had to actually wait every week for it, and I'm like, oh my gosh, uh, will will this will this never never end? Uh huh. The only good. The, the parts that I loved the most during that, and this goes with the theme of We Are Both, though, is I like the way that Charming, I like the way that he came into his own, and he even did that speech of the We Are Both, which is what I put yeah. on the, the, the title thing, when he realized that we've got to integrate who we are, that while we were the people in the Enchanted Forest, we are also still the people that we were in Storybrooke. I, I thought that was pretty badass, and I thought that he, he did a really good job delivering that speech. Mm -hmm. Also, the way he bonded with Henry. Oh, while I love this how he bonded with on. Henry. Yeah, yeah, those scenes were amazing. And while they're sitting there waiting for Snow and them to get their buttocks home, there was some really good character development with Regina, where she basically kidnaps Henry. She tries to bribe him and then she realizes she can't buy his love and gives him back to Charming. Mm -hmm. And he, she kind of kneels down and she says to him, I want to change and I want to do it for you. I thought that was really powerful. It is. I, I love the, I love Regina's relationship with Henry. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one of the, things that I love most about this series is her love for Henry and her willingness to be a different person for him. And mm -hmm. like the, the, just the, the changes in the character arcs and the, her motivations throughout the entire series, uh, not just in this season, but throughout the entire series that she goes through, it's all, a lot of it is all for him. He's her main motivation. And I absolutely love her relationship with him. Mm-hmm. Even when it means she might lose him, she, yeah. she lets him go with she charming. She lets him go, and I like the flashback too. You know, because she she has experiences, and she doesn't want that for Henry. So she's willing to give up. I, I don't want to say give up being his mom, because mm -hmm. she is technically his mom. You know, she legally adopted him, raised him, and everything. But she's willing to sacrifice time with him to prove to prove herself essentially for him because he's old enough he's older now he he realizes and he knows who she used to be so she needs to kind of prove herself again for him she's yeah. willing to sacrifice time with him in order to be a better person for henry um, yeah. i love it well and she also goes through a little bit of an addict thing where they're showing that she is also addicted to the magic and she even goes to harper uh, archie Hopper and yes. is, is like yes and to almost goes through like a you know Alcoholics Anonymous for magic users mm -hmm. and when he finally does use magic she's like I used magic and he just says come on in let's talk about this yeah um, 
So j just like an addict who knows that they need to get better, she that that's also part of her motivation. Mm -hmm. So I thought that that was in incredibly powerful. And also, like you said, she, the fact that she did not want to become her mother because her mm -hmm. mother was like that with her. So that kind of brings me into something that I wanted to say. So I think season two, it's trying to tell us that the good guys are bad and the bad guys are good because both Regina and Ruppel are both trying to be good the entire mm -hmm. time, trying to prove that they're good. And then uh, when Snow and them get back, uh, they're basically like, oh, we should have killed Regina. Oh, we got to kill Cora. Oh, we should lie to this guy so he doesn't find out that we're different, right? And mm -hmm. they're they're just doing all the wrong choices, like they say, uh, all the or something paved with good or the road to hell the is paved with good good intentions, right? Yeah. And they're just they're just they have good intentions, but they're just bad, 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 bad. You're talking about Rumble and Regina, right? Well, I well right now I'm talking about. The good guys being the bad oh. guys, but yes, I'm talking about Rumpel and Regina originally. Um, and like, even when Emma's like, No, it's tomorrow, he's trying to warn us about tomorrow. All his warnings came from when tomorrow got here, and they're like, Oh, no, you're just jealous, you're just jealous, you don't know anything, Emma. Shush, 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 right? And then mm -hmm. throughout, even when uh, what's her name? Bell was Lacey. Uh, Rumple was still trying to be like, look, I'm good. Like, and Lacey's just like the opposite of Bell and just wants the bad boy. Right. Mm -hmm, That's mm -hmm. why she goes after the sh sheriff of Nottingham. Right. And he beats the crap out of them. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. We're going to get to Lacey. Don't worry about that. Yeah. There, there's some good stuff. I see what but, you're saying. The way I interpret it, though, this big old is they were trying to show that it's not always so black and white that the good guys aren't always perfect. And the bad guys yeah. aren't always evil. And the fact that they do have flaws and they do have temptations. So evil. Again, we are both. Yeah, we are. I, we are both. Yes, yeah. exactly. We are both good and evil. Yes. Oh, um, J J JT Gunther, thank you for coming in. Thank you for coming in. I do appreciate it. He says he's good. All right, everyone, I have to go grab some dinner. Take care. It was fun. I'll talk to you all later. Yes, thank you. I appreciate you coming by. Welcome, Miss Martin Muses. Always good to see you here. And and the doggy. Sorry. <laughs> Your dog doggy. Not, no, no, it's okay. Jeff's dog yeah. is not happy oh with God, Steph right now. Oh, my God, cute little doggy. Um, but... I, I really like the fact that they don't make it easy on us in this season. But holy crap. Before we I, move I on, think I want, the I the speech that, you know, uh the speech that Charming gives, you know, we are both. He gives this big speech, but then he doesn't allow the villains to I guess prove it. You know, they're 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 kind mm -hmm. of like um villains have always been the villains they're never going to be able to change you know they can't be good they can't be both <laughs> um mm -hmm. i think that that's that's interesting as well how they, like they're willing to give every lots of people a chance but like not the villains um yes well you know what he was giving regina a chance until snow got back and then snow was like he, she's evil I hate yeah her. he tried I to hate kill me. us yesterday um, no, yeah, no, no. yeah. She. Play it fire. That's what I'm saying. Like, like, I, I just they're they're so they. But but again, it comes back to they've had all of these experiences with Regina throughout their lives. So uh, I don't think that they can actually comprehend that she would want to change for Henry because they've never really considered. It doesn't happen until later when they consider mm -hmm. her Henry's mother, you know, when yeah. they let her be and accept the fact that, okay, you are Henry's mother. We are, you know, her and Emma, we are both your moms. Uh, you know, so it doesn't, that doesn't happen until later. Now they're like, we have our baby back. This is our grandkids. The mine, mine, mine. They just got their family back and they don't want to let her uh, have, and, and it happens. Um, 
when they find oh, out that yeah. like when they find out who Henry's dad is, it happens all over. They're like, oh my God, what is going on with our family? You know? It, it, exactly. Well, and they come by it a little bit, honestly, with some of the flashbacks where they show when they were giving Regina some mercy when she was yeah. going to be mm -hmm. sentenced to death. And Regina has a chance to give a, a death speech and she just goes, my only regret is I didn't kill more of you. Yeah, but again, <laughs> Which was again. Badass. <laughs> it is badass but again i feel like something is missing there with those flashbacks and that something is henry back then she didn't have anything she just wanted revenge mm -hmm. because the one thing that she loved was taken from her now she has a chance she has something that she loves she has something that's worth fighting for worth changing for and i think that's mm -hmm. where the difference is because like uh snow and charming have these horrible memories of regina but yes but at the same time this new regina is a mother and she's going to do whatever she can to remain his mother uh and i think that that's where the difference there is and there that's why they're because they've had those experiences they're not like willing to let her change at first you know they're not willing to accept that she can change at first and that's yeah. not yeah, and that's not really, it doesn't really help that, like, when Cora comes back, they sort of team up, but it doesn't really help yeah. her. Um, well, and the part <laughs> of that was Cora's fault because she was the one that set it up and, and made them think that Regina had actually murdered yeah. Harper. So they were willing to think she had changed, and then Cora comes and messes it up where they think, oh, gosh, she tricked us, and then she went ahead and murdered him in cold blood. Mm-hmm. Uh, but gosh, gosh, this is so good because I feel like I'm unpeeling loads and loads it's, of it's layers. Such a, because... It's such a it's such a good plan too for Cora to to be like you. You might think that they're okay now, but they'll turn on you in an instant. And the way that she teaches that lesson is to mm -hmm. actually make them believe that she killed yeah. Hopper, and like she showed them like the instant turn that they had yeah. that they do or that they. You know, to prove her yeah. point. Um, it, it, yeah. But no, no, at the same time, you're she's exactly not giving right. them the benefit of the doubt. You know, she's not letting them. She's not giving them. You know, she's just, Regina's just taking like the surface level uh, lesson. Like, you're right. But if she had waited a little bit and let them know, like, Cora's, a, Cora's here. I didn't do it. It was all her. You know, she didn't go and tell them anything like that. She would, She was just like, I'm turning my back on you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, no, I, yeah, I understand. And she comes by it honestly, though. <laughs> she really does. And she has mommy issues. Uh, that's another yeah. part of it as well, is that they they have... Mommy issues are real. Uh, the Or daddy issues, the same dad issues. I, I was just watching a show, a detective show, where the character is saying, I finally figured out why our parents are the ones that can push our buttons so easily they were the ones who set the buttons up in the first place oh yeah yeah so when we saw Cora, that Cora is very much a trigger for regina we were talking about how mm -hmm. she has like this magic addiction uh cora is very much a trigger for regina i mean she that's why in um oh man when she sends hook to murder her mom she knows that she needs her dead in order for her plan to work you know mm -hmm. in order to succeed she needs that out of her life, out of her mind. She can't have that. So, you know, Cora is a very big trigger for Regina when it comes to magic and using magic. And she's a big influence on her. And, you know, we talk about magic being an addiction. If someone comes back into your life, that's not good for you, which this, in this yeah. case would be Cora, you know, it sends Regina into a bad, uh, I don't want to say yeah, spiral, It's like the equivalent of, of a heroin addict who is yeah. clean, well, then someone Pat, comes up, like, woohoo, here's some heroin. Becoming best fun. friends again with, like, the person who introduced them to heroin, you know? Yeah, or the dealer, yeah. Yeah. No, that that's true. Well, uh, but before we go on, <laughs> I, I just love this. I love all of these things. Before we go on, there was a great, great moment where Regina did put something to bed during the Frankenstein episode when Daniel... Oh was unnaturally brought back to life uh -huh. and Regina was able to have just a few moments when he was lucid 
when he remembered who he was and she was able to tell him, I missed you. I love you. And he goes, then love again. And, and then she has to let him go because he was going to kill Henry. Yeah. Um, her again, something that she's doing because she's protecting her son. She's a mother now, yeah. you know, and she has to, yeah, th before she was, she let her anger and her lust for revenge because of snow and what her mom did to Daniel. Now she has to be the one to, to kill him, to, you know, mm -hmm. to break that spell and her wail when she does that, when she has oh. to do that, it's so good. And like, just thinking about that sound that she, she's such an amazing actress. I absolutely love her acting in mm -hmm. this show but watching that scene like i started to cry i mean that's like yes. getting getting daniel back and you know he's she's been seeing him and she thinks mm -hmm. that she's great but in reality she's not she thinks that she's been seeing him and she has to protect her son the thing that she loves the most now you know and and daniel was a part of her past and it's not even Daniel, you know, and the fact that she was pushing uh, the way she was her acting in this whole entire last scene with Daniel is incredible because, mm -hmm. you know, she was she pushes David out of the way because David's about to kill him. And she's like, yeah. no, you know, she's trying to protect Daniel, but then she has to protect Henry. She can't protect both because one wants to kill the other. And who is she yes. going to choose? And she chooses her son. And that's Oh, it's that was such a god. This is when Once Upon a Time was so good. Like that part. Yes. Is, oh, it it makes me. I, I want to cry now. Just going back and thinking about that scene. It's such a good scene, and she plays it. Well, so yeah. you're getting emotional about I that am. scene. <laughs> I'm thinking about how they broke the hat rule in that episode. Uh <laughs> they, go, they go in with two, and then they come back with three. Okay, That's they broke the rule. <laughs> That Wait a second, do they? So much, yes, because they bring back Frankenstein to their world at one point. No, no, no. Wait a or second. No, they bring they they bring a third person back to their world and comes back with two. It's one or the other. Um, I'm because not sure Frank, about that. Frank, no, they break they they break the rule. I remember that, but I don't remember which way it came. But they broke the rule of the hat. Okay. Because uh, I, what they they go to get a heart and they bring him in with the heart, right? So they do and they bring Frankenstein to their house so he can pick a heart, uh -huh. and then they all go and they go back. But the to go there first, they went with two, and then they come back with three, and then they go back with three again. You're right. I am right. Yeah, I know. That's why it bothers me because she could have. No, Jeff no, did not. wait. Yes, 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 sure? yes, 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 absolutely. I'm yes, yes. I'm sure. Wait, are you talking about when they're with the Winter Soldier or <laughs> they're with Jefferson? Yeah. Wait, Jefferson yeah. and Whale, a.k.a. Frankenstein. Yeah. And who's the third Regina. person? Regina. Regina. Okay. Because Regina tells them that they have a hat, right? Or they she knows where to get a hat. So because she I takes them that, back. I thought... And they all go back to the portal and they get the, the, they get the heart. And then they go back. So they went with two, left, came back with three, and then went back with three again, and then left with two. Okay. They broke the rule of the hat. So that that bothered me because it reminds me of like, oh, well, you left Jefferson in season one because the hat has its special rules. But in season two, that hat had different rules. And then in the next, uh, or the next one, it had the rules again. So I was like, oh, I hate you guys just for that. Let me look it up. Let me look <laughs> yeah, it up I was going to say Google that. Everybody Google because I, I need to double check that. I I don't quite remember the details of that plot, but I can definitely see. Well, definitely later they come, they broke all their rules and they didn't care. But yeah. 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 But I, I love the fact that they did bring back Jefferson and the fact that they finally had Jefferson have his reunion with his daughter. Oh, I know. Oh yeah, that that's my that favorite reunion. I lied earlier. I'm sorry. Forgive yeah. me for I have lied. Yeah, it is okay. Yeah, it wasn't. It's not a lie if you don't quite remember. Yes, and and that also went with the theme of Snow lamenting how much she missed out by raising Emma because they had just visited 
the the nursery and it was all torn up obviously from the from the curse and there's a very brief moment where snow looks and she sees the nursery all the way it should have been and she even hears the baby like laughing and she's just crying because she realized how much she lost and then it segues into jefferson with the help of henry the truest believer going ahead and finding his daughter again and he's crying he's crying uh yeah okay uh miss michael's asylum says the first use of the hat has them retrieve something from the enchanted forest without sending something to the enchanted forest yeah but see that's during the curse right so this one happened when they were before the curse was even cast yes okay yeah oh yeah and sebastian and jennifer yes they were dating so it was there, there was three, lots then of three than two yeah there was lots of dating and babies happening and marriages because <laughs> i think it was around season three that everybody had a baby in the cast everyone was like whatever's in the water of that cast you know if you're trying to have a baby having trouble with infertility just go and drink the water from the cast of once upon a time well we but, all yes, know did. who i would have went for yeah, well, <laughs> well, she didn't actually have a baby. I think she was one of the few people that didn't have a baby. Uh, but, but, yeah, that 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 was a a great moment, and that was the last time we saw Jefferson because he went off to be the Winter Soldier after after that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I I cried, I cried at that that episode because Snow, that whole thing where she sees the nursery restored, that just really moved me and then we went right into that with jefferson taking the leap and meeting his daughter out the school bus and she was just so happy to see him uh so uh oh michael asylo not uh, ashamed to say i had a small man crush on josh Dallas. hey mm, everybody no did there i'll tell I you did. what i, I did. have a girl crush I have a complete crush on Josh Dallas. I love that man more than life itself. We have a Viking in the house. We have a Viking in the house. Hello there, Teresa and company. Just woke up to you by to say hello there. Yeah, or, there. Hello Hi, there. Stieg. Hello, Steeg. Yes, waking up from the future. I love Josh Dallas. I have seen all the uh, scenes with him in season two, I think, over and over and over again because he wasn't the big wuss he was in season one. He was very manly. He was a leader. He, the way he was such a good grandfather to Henry, like when he gave Henry a pony and then said, but you've got to get up early in the morning. You've got to shovel the hay. You got to mm -hmm. look after it. I thought that was great. That's what happens when there's no snow. Yeah. <laughs> They man you up. <laughs> you become a man. Yeah. Uh, Snow yeah. is the anti-man equation. Uh, <laughs> there were two hats. Jefferson had two hats. Oh, it's the one that Emma made, huh? Yeah, because it's the one he had in the Enchanted Forest, and then the one that they went through in Storybrooke with Emma's magic, right? Uh, you know, I don't know. Did that one actually work? Did she actually make it? She I made it work because that. because uh, Regina was trying to make the the hat work in Storybrooke to send the wraith through it, remember? And because uh, she had to use magic, and then Emma touched her shoulders, and that's kind of our first glimpse or or hint or foreshadowing that Emma could be magical, have magic. Um, yeah, but I thought that she got the hat, hat because she'd actually taken the hat. She actually had it in part of her little. Yeah, hat. I thought she stole the hat. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. No, because she's. Uh, I don't even think that. Uh, was it? Em wasn't it Emma that was like the Mad Hatter's hat, Child Between Worlds? Wasn't it Emma who suggested that? Well, yeah, but it was the hat. It was the hat because remember Regina oh. had kept all the stuff, so it was actually the hat. She didn't make a hat, and apparently Stieg um, says Steph cried when the shark and Jaws died. Uh, <laughs> yeah. a lot. Talk about a digression there. Uh, Hey, I cry. I I will not. I will say I was not ashamed to cry on that season three episode when when that happened and when Sebastian Stan was crying with his daughter. Absolutely, oh, yeah, that was great. Anyway, I can't find the rules of the hat, uh, so I don't know if no. the rules of the hat is what goes in must come out. 
Winky Winky Woo says Steph stole the hat. There you go. That's <laughs> canon. That's I canon right it. then and I there. I believe it. Well, so are we going to talk about the greatest character of all time yet? We're almost there. We're almost there. We're almost there because I want to bring the conclusion of them bringing them home because Charming decides that he's going to put himself under the sleeping curse because he learned that you can dream. Oh, yeah. If you've been under the sleeping curse, you can dream and talk to each other. That and was how kind of dumb. Oh, I thought it was awesome. <laughs> you did? Oh, you were just going to say how awesome is that, huh? Wait. Well, I was going to say how hot was that because they got to put... Because it was fire? <laughs> well, there was not only fire, but the, the, they were able to put put charming to sleep but i'm like i'd like to have a little bit of that potion <laughs> Teresa, you want to put men to i'm sleep? sorry yeah if things are getting controversial but that's how strongly i feel about charming um, <laughs> i thought it was my job to be controversial on this stream. <laughs> yeah no, it's i like i like that because he's like you know what huh, and he breaks it he breaks through and he's like ha huh, i knew i'd find you <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah and, the, and they're able to communicate and yeah. realize how, how they can how they can go home and that was another great re moment for regina because at first she and rumpelstiltskin were like we've got to do everything to stop cora from coming through that through. well even if it's gonna mean that they're not gonna be able to come here and yeah Regina put a stop to that because Henry appealed to her and then it turned out that she was right, uh, th that it was the right decision that they were, they did make it. And she had that faith because of Henry mm -hmm. bringing that to her and dang it. That's what finally brings them home because I was just like, fuck this, get them home. Um, <laughs> see alex mccarthy says i'm watching episode nine of season two right now lol yes yes Which one's episode I, nine? yeah that that's that is the episode when they come home it, it's, no, but it's what's pretty the name powerful. of it uh, uh let me see hold on is that the one right after tallahassee or right before tallahassee or no it was after tallahassee yeah it was after because i think that's that. like the second to last one before they yeah, before oh, right. they finally get their buttocks home that and then go Queen on. of Hearts. Oh, yeah, that's a good yeah. one. That's a yeah. good one. That's yeah. probably my favorite episode. Oh, sorry. Oh, spoiler alert. That's okay. It's okay. How <laughs> dare you, my nerdy home? How dare you? Well, this brings us now that we brought everyone home, this brings us to something that just deserves its own topic, which yes. was the introduction to Hook. And I'm going to. Uh, give the floor to steph go ahead tell us all about hook and his oh gosh uh colin o'donohue plays captain killian jones aka captain hook uh he is introduced as uh just um a survivor in this village everybody's dead and he's the only survivor and uh he essentially wants to trick these women into getting a compass from a giant and they have to climb a beanstalk and uh but the ladies find out exactly who he is because emma has a superpower emma has a superpower and she can tell when someone is lying so he reveals himself pretty quickly as captain hook captain killian jones and um he plays the character phenomenally his addition to the cast was amazing i think that uh he nobody could have played this character better in my opinion, I think that he uh, his addition is so it was such a phenomenal decision. Uh, he plays it so well, his charisma, the energy that he brings to the role, uh, his line delivery. Um, it's it's incredible. He does like these little things with the hook character. Uh, he 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 becomes the character, essentially. And um he does like these little things in the background that you don't really notice because you're focusing on other characters. But me who watches every single moment that he is on screen, I just watch him in the background. It's really curious how he acts in a lot of the scenes because he never stops being Hook. Never, ever, ever stops being that character when uh, when they're filming. And he's phenomenal. I love him. Um, 
I love the his dilemma as well, where like he is a he is a villain, but he's not really a villain. You know, like he still met he still has a set of core values um that he keeps to a, a code. code. He has a code. Um <laughs> he still has he still has a code that he keeps, you know, it and it's surprising to Emma, it's surprising to a lot of people that he like keeps this code. Um yeah. But yeah, I absolutely I love I love the character of Hook. I love the character of Hook. Yeah. Well, and you you talked about the when Hook is introduced to Emma, which uh, the, the Captain Swan fan in you, but yeah, his actual introduction, I think, as Biggles would say, is the unbelievably amazing debut of the crocodile. That is oh, the crocodile, yeah, yeah, badass oh, episode. Oh. That episode is amazing. Of course, not just the best introduction, I think, to a new character in a show ever, but oh my gosh, him and Robert Carlyle. Their chemistry, their you know hatred for each other, that was on fire. That it's was so fucking good. amazing. So good, so yeah. freaking good. Oh yeah. man, that episode Biggles, is amazing. Yeah, the Biggles, crocodile. what do you want to tell us about the crocodile? So this is one of my favorite episodes. Uh, I I don't know which one is my actual favorite, but. Uh, so you meet Hook, and he's just in the bar with Mila, right? And he's just like talking to her, and he's like, "Oh, I need my boy, right? I need I or my or she needs to be with my boy, or something like that. I don't remember exactly yeah. what he says." Um, but. He's like, uh, he's just like, oh, whatever. And then Bay comes in and she goes and runs off. And then she comes back and basically Hook is just like, oh, I'm glad I made an impression on you, right? And like, whatever. And just like, fight me if you if you really want her. Like, he, he would have gave her up. Like, mm-hmm. that was, he even like said it. Like, And then he's like, a man that won't fight for what he wants. A man and willing to fight for what he wants deserves what he gets. I love it. Yeah, that. yeah, that's it. I, I don't remember the lines, even though I just watched this episode again yeah. yesterday. Um. <laughs> but I mean, it, it wasn't very fair, though, because Rumpel was a cripple and old and you know, he was young. Uh, he probably would have. Again, been though, killed. again, though, I think that he would have respected the fact that he is fighting. And as I, a I, don't, I, don't, I don't think he would have killed him because. He's got a code. Yeah, right? he has a code. Oh, Hook, he he has a code. He would have respected I the think... fact that even as a cripple, he's going to fight for his wife. Oh, good uh, point. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. But his, well, yes, his introduction, especially on the boat, on his ship, mm-hmm. when Rumpel falls, you see his feet and the camera pans up. Oh, to yeah. Killian. Oh, oh, it's phenomenal. It's so good because in the bar, in the bar, he's just you know another. He's just yeah, a little very, patron. Very he's just another there. patron. Yeah, yeah, he's just sitting there with Mila. You don't really know that he's the captain of the ship yeah. until he introduces himself, Killian Jones. What are you doing on my ship? You know, um, he's so good. He is so yeah. so freaking good. Uh, I like when he's just like his line delivery. Every single part of his line delivery, and yes. Him and Robert Carlyle have the best chemistry on the show. The yeah. best chemistry uh, between actors. It's him and Robert Carlyle. And I love the, I love all the scenes that they do together. And, uh, you know, everything, everything that he says on the show, he's just like, I've had many a man's wives. Like, just the simple little lines. <laughs> this is delivery is so it? good. So yeah. good. And Genevieve, so and Genevieve's great to see you. Great to see you, Genevieve. She says that also the the duel between Rumple and Hook is so well done. Yes, it's like it turns into like an Errol Flynn movie for a second, and yeah. has a swashbuckling where they're literally sword fighting. Mm-hmm. How sword fighting? So awesome. good. Well, well, they go back to that right, and he's like, it's also known as the Dark One, and he's like, I have, or like you've heard of me, or my mm-hmm. reputation precedes me, and he's like, you've heard of me, I have. He's like, I'm glad to make an impression. Like, he, yeah, he yeah. With a lot Hook of said to him earlier. 
Yeah, a lot. Great. Yes, a lot of their stuff, a lot of their meetings really mirror each other because they're so intertwined in their in each other's story. So like even yeah. spoiler alert, when later on when Hook uh they they kind of switch places later on and Hook is in in a gold shop and he does his little hand thing, you know, and they mm -hmm. have their their duel. A lot of it is just mirrors everything perfectly. Um and I, I love I love that about their their story just them two just them two their yes. story and again i could you... watch them all day oh yeah, yeah and just again, get rid with of snow them. white and just all, <laughs> all the time and again you learn or you see with hook his loyalty his devotion to the people that he loves because he's willing to die to protect mila he doesn't want mila to go back with rumpel the dark one he doesn't want her uh, him to know that Mila is still alive. So she's like, she's dead. She's dead. Yeah. You know? And so he's willing to die. He's going to fight the Dark One knowing that he's going into a losing battle. He's going to die because the Dark One has magic. And Hook is just a, a pirate. He's a he's a pirate. He's a say, he's a captain. He doesn't, he doesn't have magic. So he knows he's going to yeah. die. He probably went home, told Mila everything that happened, which is why Mila comes back and she's in, and he finds out that she's alive. And they're in love, you know? Yeah, they're truly um, in love. Yeah. They're and then truly he... in love. And so you you find out how deep Hook's devotion and loyalty and just the depths of his love for people, or especially for the women that he cares about and loves truly, uh, goes. Because he's willing to die for her. Um, yeah. And instead, she ends up dying. So now, not only does he have that, he still maintains that devotion and love for mila but now he has replaced um the loyalty to her with like this lust for revenge you know mm -hmm. in going after the man who killed her it's, it's incredible you also, you also see a lot of his love and like not the crocodile but the it, i think it's like finding bayfire or something like that what is it the some bayfire oh yeah 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 that's the second start of the right that's the end yeah yeah, like at the and he he shows the love to Mila, even though mm -hmm. he knows it's the son of the dark one. He he loves her. Yeah, because, because it's, it's Mila's the Mila, son of Mila's the son. yeah of the woman that he loved, and they had plans to come back and get Belfire too. So he's yeah. trying. He's essentially kind of like uh, fulfilling Mila's wishes by taking care of him, taking care mm -hmm. of Belfire. Yeah. Well, and and two thumbs up for the way that Colin O'Donohue played hook in the scene when he's bullying what he thinks is just a beggar. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then when Rumple reveals it's the dark one and his he's like, Oh shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, his look reaction. on his face. That's what I'm like, saying. He does like, I am subtle so effed. I'm so <laughs> yeah. fucked. Yeah. He does like these subtle looks, these subtle, uh, Act, the way he acts is it's so mm -hmm. good you, you believe yeah. it's believable he really yeah. transforms into hook he's yeah. such and, a good and, actor and the fact mm -hmm. that through his problems with rumple his his rivalry and his need to get revenge and on his one true love that's also how he loses his hand and becomes mm -hmm. hook so i, I love when he puts his hook yeah. Oh my god, she's got a hook. <laughs> and then she goes to Neverland. I love how he says Neverland. Yeah. He's like Neverland. And then he does the, the wheel. It's so phenomenally done. He's such a great actor. Yeah. Um, well, and the whole episode was so yeah. well done. I, I was saying in the green room before we got went live that the anticipation for this episode was unbelievable that we were all so fired up and everyone was so excited for it and when it happened the fact that it was such a brilliant episode and it did not let us down that it yeah. was as badass and as awesome as we all thought it was gonna be we all lost our minds it was so much fun yeah and not only that but i love do you, i love Do uh, captain dark one hooks what am i saying captain hooks theme song Oh yes, yes, yes. He has such a good theme song. Yeah, and like, that when, when he and you don't hear it until he does the hook and becomes the hook, yeah. 
Captain Hook. You don't hear it until then, and you hear the Hook theme song. I love it. Yeah, uh, I'm really I, bad I at noticing the music. Yeah, I. I <laughs> Gosh darn. I had the opportunity to interview Mark Isham, the composer, before this episode aired, and he had said that his hook theme was his favorite new track for season two. He, yeah, he loved it. So and he said good. it was so much fun to write. Yeah. And I I I just gotta say that we all lost our friggin' minds, and I'm so sorry you weren't around to enjoy it because Steph, it was <laughs> so much fun fun the anticipation just the anticipation of it mm -hmm. and when we, when we knew that hook was coming because at san diego comic Con they did a thing where it, it they just showed uh a hook it, you know and then everyone was like oh my gosh hook's coming and then when we found out they cast colin o'donohue we were like holy crap hot damn he's hot and, <laughs> and then when it was so good it, yeah it, it, it and he was such a good villain. Uh, and he he does some pretty terrible things in, in this season. Um, you know, when he, he, he teams up with Cora and mm -hmm. yeah, he he's he's <laughs> he's a real what's funny. He's like honest the entire time. He's like, Yeah, they told me to betray you, so this is what's going to happen. And he like tells everybody what's going to happen, and they're like, "I don't believe you." And he's like, "Emma, have I told you one lie? Yeah, like, why no, are you didn't. walking me up here? Like, he, he yeah, was cold, he, he he was honest the entire time while flirting with every single woman on the show, and it was great. I love it. The gift, yeah. Was not, when I when I shared um I shared our stream, and I used that gif where he leans over to uh mm -hmm. to snow and he's like thank you my lady and then he oh yeah thing. that is so good he's, he's so well good. he flirted with aurora yeah uh, i mean it was i think like, he flirted with everyone but mulan because but mulan he didn't mulan flirt with like mulan, mulan <laughs> yeah. busy he flirted with now. everyone but mulan um i love uh i was hoping it would be you and i love that he could read emma like a book mm-hmm we, we, well, you that, know the the whole beanstalk conversation that they had was oh, really yeah. really good. He he and like Lord, really got Lord. under her skin, uh, and you saw it in her expression. She's just like okay. She was uncomfortable, very uncomfortable mm -hmm. with the fact that he could really read her. She didn't know what to do with that. Uh, yeah, I like that. I, I like that his, conversation. His flirting style is actually very good, and it actually works in real life. Just so you guys know. I it bet. Work in real life. Well, um, and then I just like got to. Whole... Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna steal your thunder a little bit here, Steph, because when that whole beanstalk thing happens and they're up there on top, mm -hmm. and Emma cuts herself, and he ties oh. up the bandage with his teeth. <laughs> Holy shit! When did we go crazy? Oh, I was like, man. I will do anything for this man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does it with their teeth. Oh my gosh! And her like look, a, you can see, too. you can literally see the conflict within Emma because that's how everyone was feeling. It's just like he's a villain, but damn, uh -huh. <laughs> you can see the conflict with Emma because she's just like, I think I kind of like him, but I know I can't like him. I can't. Yeah, like exactly. Him. Yeah, that was in uh, Tallahassee. Yeah. Um, that's yeah. Good oh my gosh. That oh, holy. Sh I mean, that was that was another thing. That was the the squeal of all the women <laughs> a, a, around the world. That was so incredibly hot. Um, oh, yes, it was. Yeah. So we we love ourselves some Hook, and and then later when Hook decides to try to get revenge on Rumple by kidnapping Belle and threatening her, you know, the way he does. And he doesn't kidnap Bill. What? Oh wait, no, that's uh, sorry, that's in the when she's locked in the. That's before the curse, right? That's outside of. Story, oh yeah, right? yeah, that's what okay, he. Sorry, that's sorry. what he belts her. Yeah, he. Yeah, but later when he finds out that from Doctor Hopper that Bell's his chick, and he kidnaps her, and then when Rumple shows up. And just starts beating the crap out of him, and, and and then Hook's like, "Go ahead, kill me, kill me, so I can be with Mila," and tries to goad him into killing him. That's intense as well. 
Um, gosh, I, I thought, no, I thought she, he didn't kidnap her. I thought it was Smee who kidnapped her for her father. And then she was with Rumpel to say goodbye to him as he was going to cross with the Shaw. And he shot her. And she fell across the she line. Across oh, that was later. No, he, yeah. Well, trust me, Belle had her fair share of having her. Belle's issues. always getting kidnapped. Yeah, she's always getting kidnapped. Um, yeah, so she was kidnapped by Shmi in the crocodile. I, I skipped ahead just to the episode, the, um, was it the outsider that, um, yeah. he kidnaps her and has her in on his boat. And then that's oh, when yeah, the yeah, okay. shows up. And then he shoots her later because, Proving that no good deed goes unpunished, Rumpel listened to Bell and didn't kill him and let him go. And then he turns around and shoots her. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now that was well, the first did, of her many kidnappings. He didn't kidnap her technically. She went to the boat and then he tied her up. Okay. She, so he just held her she, in bondage. She, she gave herself to, <laughs> to tie up. She sacrificed she went, uh, herself like, to the old yeah. <laughs> Steph's like you can tie me up. Huh? You can tie me yeah, up. Yeah, <laughs> any day. Well, I'll tell you what. He was tied up a lot, and and there was also the joke about the captain floor because he he just kept falling and getting knocked out like ten ten thousand times. Oh yeah, floor two. hook. Yeah, floor yeah. Hook. <laughs> He's always hook loves the floor. I saw those. I saw like <laughs> I love you, floor. I, people had the best memes of him like making out with the floor and oh, uh, like I will die this, for you, floor. <laughs> is that why in season three he makes the uh, the joke when Blackbeard's on the ship and he's like, "You would know not to step here." Did they did they write that in because of all, all the times he fell? Uh, I'm not entirely sure. Maybe, maybe not. Oh. Um, but yeah, he was also tied up. I called that that ship uh, Captain Rope because uh, <laughs> he was tied up several times in this episode. Yeah. So all right, we're. I want to go ahead and move on to our next scene. But yes, absolutely, that was amazing. That was amazing. Uh, his introduction, and we love Hook. We love Hook here at Miss Martin Muses, and we do not uh, accept any uh, dissent <laughs> from no that. anyone who says they don't love. We'll hook. get my You're hook. Done. Yeah, we'll get her hook. Yes. I love um, when he when he goes like this. Oh in yeah. The, next season. <laughs> it's in season yeah. three. Oh my gosh. Well, our next theme is finding Balefire. Because this was a huge theme. This was the whole reason for the curse. This was the whole motivation behind everything that Rumpelstiltskin was doing, which was the reason why he brought magic back was because he wanted to find his son. Yeah. And in his journey to find Balefire, th we we discover that uh well Emma how she hooked up with at the time she just knew him as Neil. We didn't know that it was yeah. Balefire, though we were almost entirely certain that that was the case. And that he crossed the town line as as Biggles was saying to try to to try to go to New York to find his son and brings Emma along and that was the promise that he got out of her in the price of gold uh, more than a year earlier so everything is coming full circle and then shit hits the fan in the episode Manhattan when we learn not only does he find Balefire that yeah. Neil is his son and Emma finds out that the person she screwed was the son of Rumpelstiltskin. And Neil finds out that he has a son. I mean, holy mm -hmm. shit. Not only that, but Rumpel finds out that from a, uh, a seer. as the seer that Henry is supposed to bring about like his death or something like that. His uh, downfall was the exact His words. downfall. Yeah. yeah. And of course, just and like he, in a Sophocles thing, he misinterprets it. Yes. And this was very interesting because it's his downfall, but he doesn't know. But his reaction, the, oh, God, his look on his face looking at Henry. Oh, yeah. When because he realizes. He knows, but it's his grandson, you know, and it's just kind of like, how is he going to handle this? And then when anyways, I'm jumping ahead. But yeah, the no. look that he gives Henry towards the end of that episode. 
Whew. I just, yeah. I, it, it's unsettling. It's unsettling. It's very unsettling. I thought it was awesome. Yeah. It's unsettling. <laughs> that's why it's so awesome. Cause it's like, dude, Rumpel, no, that's your grandson. Like, you really gotta do that to you your just grandson. found Neil. Yeah. Well, in, in this episode, Manhattan, the one we're talking about, it changed everything. Yeah. It was like they all had this big truce, if you will, because of the promise Emma had made, and she goes to New York with him, and just everything hits the complete fan. And when Rumpel starts to realize that Emma might know his son and he starts to lose, like, don't lie to me. Don't lie to me. And then Balefire comes in and, and Rumpel realizes when he realizes not only is this, is he finally seeing his son as a grown up, he realizes that, well, for lack of a better word, that his son was shagging Emma <laughs> and that, <laughs> that his grandson's in the next room. Oh my gosh. It 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 was in, incredible and the fact that Balefire wanted nothing to do with him, which made perfect sense. It's like after everything. <laughs> he doesn't want anything to do with him. And until Rumpel gets poisoned by Hook with this weird call, thing. Okay. Yeah. Well, it was Papa. like some I'm like mm. Papa. Oh. I <laughs> I love that actor, Michael. What's his name? Um, Michael. His name is Neil. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love that actor. I I really like him. I don't like him in the role of Neil, uh, but he was a, a True Blood actor. So I mean, I guess. Yeah, I, yeah. Michael. Uh, I, I got the wrong name. I know. Oh, uh, I don't want to call him Michael. I know his last name starts with an R, but I can't remember. Exactly is it Michael Reese Davis? Isn't it? Maybe. Okay, everybody, Google. Um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. Genevieve makes a good point. Yeah, that Runcel's uh, Rumpel's profiting was very interesting. I thought it was already fulfilled until the end of the show. Yeah, it wasn't until the end of the show that they actually did that. That was the uh, mm -hmm. one of the good things about season season seven. And uh, Michael's asylum says the scene with Rumpel going through the airport scanner and trying to hold on to the cart was awesome. Yes, what amazing acting by yeah. him. Yeah. And then yeah. he started to like faint as he's going through it. Yes, and Emma was actually really. Michael Raymond, Thank that's you. it. Michael yeah. Raymond James. Yeah, I, I was close. <laughs> yeah. And, and I also like that way someone says, like, have you ever been through an airport before? And then Rumpel's like, have you ever had a, a walking cane up your butt before? Or something like that. And it, 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 it's funny. It's, he's, he's in the real world. You're taking him out. Again, he's, he feels vulnerable because he has no magic. He feels vulnerable. He feels weak. And there's all of these like things around him that he has no idea about. You know, he's just like, yeah. what is this? He doesn't like it. He's unsettled. He feels weak. He feels vulnerable. And he's angry about that. He doesn't yes. like being in that position. He plays it so well. Yeah. He, and it goes back to the way he feels about when he's out of power, when he's feeling yes. powerless, you know, like, yeah. so, yeah. and, <laughs> funny moment also in the scanning thing when Emma goes, my my father is <laughs> nervous about flying. And he's like, father? <laughs> it's like, well, yeah. Yeah. And Genevieve is correct. Um, Robert Carlyle's kids were in that scene. They were. Oh, really? The, yeah, his wife and his, his little kids were like right behind him. Like there, there's this little family. It was really cute. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that was that was a great thing. And remember how frustrated he was that when he went into the toilet and he just beat the crap out of the the door, uh, the stall. Uh, no, the, uh, no, the the, it, the toilet seat hole, uh, the the toilet cover holder. Yeah, whatever, where you get the <laughs> where you get the toilet paper thingies. Not toilet. Yeah, paper thingies, the, well, you know what it covers. You, toilet yeah, seat where, covers. Yeah, the butt covers. Yeah, it's like dang, you know what? Gotta use like eight of those. He's angry. He's so mad that he's powerless. Yeah, and and feeling so vulnerable, and he's not knowing anything that's going on. It th that was some of the best uh, stuff so in the show, and and you start to see almost like they're foreshadowing. It's like, wait, they're going to be a family, you know? We're starting to get in some familial roles. Mm -hmm. The only part I felt was a little bit iffy was just how convenient it was 
that Emma's like, I'm just going to randomly bring Henry along with me <laughs> on this trip. It's like, really? Really? You know, uh, you did he want to go? Home with I can't grandma remember. Grandpa? Sorry? Did he want to go with her? I don't Henry? remember. Well, yeah. So they, well, all that they did was it was almost like a throwaway line. He's like, why is Henry coming? It's like, uh, you know, he's coming with me. Because plot. Um, <laughs> because, no, he said because uh, he didn't want her with Regina. Oh, that's yeah, possible. Yeah, I thought but... it was because, yeah, he didn't want to stay with Regina or something like that. Maybe. I still say they pulled that out of their buttocks oh, because probably, they had yeah. to have Henry well, there. Well, well there was Regina and Cora, but... Yeah. I do like the line about the pizza, and he's like, next you're going to tell me the best pizzas in New York. And he's like, it's actually in... Some faraway place or whatever. Oh and yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's like just kidding. It's in New York. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Cute. There was there were some really great moments. Oh gosh, that was so good. And well, and how ominous when as they're leaving, Rumpelstiltskin says, "If anything happens to Bell while I'm gone, I'm gonna kill all of you." And it's like, dude, yeah, because that's the he he loves her the most. And they take that shit ser that threat seriously. <laughs> they might as well have like put her back in a padded room or like wrapped her up in bubble wrap, like in bubble shit. wrap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did Teresa leave? I don't know. She might have disappeared. Maybe she muted. I don't know. So, um, Bellfire. <laughs> uh, Bellfire um, finds out that he has a son after yelling at Emma, and he's like, "No, my dad's a firefighter." And, I like uh, I like Michael's acting in that scene because he's like looking at her, like you know, like seriously, Emma, don't fuck with me here, you know, like yeah, there she goes. Um, yep. I love that scene because he's just like, "Is this my son? Is that my yeah. son?" Like he gets really, really angry in that scene. Because he didn't know about him. She didn't tell him, you know, because she just gave him away for ado for adoption, never even mm -hmm. sent him a letter. And, no, you know, knowing his past and the history he had with his with his dad, you know, you would think he would he if he had uh, a son, he wouldn't be like his father. He would take that responsibility seriously, you know, which mm -hmm. he did as soon as he found out that Henry was his kid. Boom! It was his. He he was responsible for him. He tried bonding with him immediately, um, and uh, it's uh, it's so powerful when he finds out that like he has a he has a son because he's he almost like chokes up a little bit in that scene, um, mm -hmm. and then then Emma and Henry get in a fight. Then Emma and Henry get into a, a fight because she told Henry that her dad was a firefighter, that his dad was a firefighter, and that he died. And um, Henry is mad that he lied, that she lied to him. Um, you know, and and in Emma's mind, she did it to protect Henry because she didn't want to know. She didn't want mm -hmm. him to know her past because they essentially have just met. You know, she doesn't want him to know about her past, about how how sad her past was, about you know the fact that she was stealing all of the time in order to uh, make her make a make a living. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That yes. her her dad is a thief, just like, uh, just like Bell or that blah, blah, that they're both like criminals. They're both criminals, you know. And she didn't want yeah. him to know that, so she in her mind she's protecting him. Um, Zacharot said, "Where's Teresa? I don't know. Uh, she was in the middle of talking. She got disconnected, and I guess she she's probably gonna fix it here in a little bit. Uh, but I right. I really love that. You know what I didn't talk about." is i think it's in the tallahassee episode because is it in the tallahassee episode let me double check um there, well tell me what happened and i can tell yes, you what it's because yes it's because when emma and they're climbing the beanstalk and what i love in that episode and it, again is foreshadowing this relationship that emma and hook are going to have later on in the episode um i love that you know when emma and when she's pretending to be pregnant because they're doing mm -hmm. this whole shtick the stealing the thief whatever they're doing that whole oh, thing the in the yeah in the yep. grocery store Convenient she part. like she smells the bread and smiles and then like hook smells the money and smiles 
and it again it like mirrors a little bit and it, you're kind of it's foreshadowing that you know that that hook and emma are eventually going to have a relationship they're like uh i love that i love that how i love how that like, kind of mirrors each other again i don't know Welcome um, back. Yeah, I was cursing up a storm. I was doing like rumple when he's beating the shit out of the bathroom door thing. I was like, <laughs> "Don't worry, I took charge." Well, good. I'm I'm glad when a man takes charge. Yeah, I was disconnected. I'm thinking, "Oh my gosh, what <laughs> missing Rose? Oh gosh, uh oh, missing Rose. Uh, where's Teresa?" <laughs> yeah. Well, whatever y'all were saying sounded great. Um, oh, I went in a Mad Hatter hat. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's great well i'm assuming y'all were saying awesome things i'm sure you were um yes about uh, i forget what i was doing i think we were talking about neil meeting henry as his kid and uh oh, yes. bell had just uh or not bell rumple had just threatened if anything happens to bell i'll kill you every, or kill all of you because that's who he loves the most and then you started talking and then you went boop yeah. Oh gosh. Well, yes, because you don't feck with Bale, Bell, and it's also his my favorite line almost of the entire season that Rumpelstiltskin says in the middle of all this when Charming is trying to get Rumpel to help them with a problem, and he's like, "Yeah, this is gonna happen. That's gonna be happening. You're all gonna be fucked." And so glad I don't give a damn. <laughs> I could get him. He doesn't care because of Bell, you know. And yeah. so I use that all the time. I, I used to have it on my phone uh, on my text, but I eventually had to take it off because, you know, when it happened at work, you know, so glad I don't give a damn. I love that line because that was uh, be between that and Balefire, that was all he cared about. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Sometimes to a fault, obviously. Um, um very much so. But yeah, when when he says, is this my son? When, is when this Bale my Fire son? Says, yeah. Oh, and she's like, go away, go away. And, and Henry's like, he's like, how old are you? And all that. Yes. Oh how old are you? Oh, I'm how old are you? Yeah. yeah. And she's God. like, don't answer him. It's like, is this my, my son? son? Yes. And he's kind of, he says it almost like he's angry, but he's also choking up a little bit because yes. he didn't know about him, you know? It, it, exactly and and emma had just lied to him earlier in the episode oh what a yes that bitch oh, that bitch exactly and when um he's you know henry's all pissed and he's out on the fire escape and then balefire aka neil he says to emma it's like okay yes we're we're screwed up we all know that how about we don't do that to our son and then he yeah. goes out to talk with Henry and Henry and him have such a moving moment, like a great father son moment. And he's like, I'm sorry. I wasn't there for you. And Henry's like, that's okay. You didn't know. You didn't know I, exi you didn't know I existed. And I was telling Biggles that he, he's almost choked when he's getting angry and he wants to know if that's his son because of the history that he has with his father. You know, the fact that yes. he, yeah, the fact that you, you know that if Neil had a son if neil had a child he wouldn't repeat the same mistakes that his dad did all he wanted was to be with his dad you know he got yes that, that's all he wanted he got that bean so he, they would they could escape magic and magic won't be in their lives anymore and his dad didn't go with him you know and he had to grow up without him and you know that bellfire would never do that if neil had a son he would never do or wait you you know what I'm talking about. Same person. Yes. Whatever. You know that he would never do that if he knew that he had a son. He would always be there for him because of what he experienced when he was younger. You know, exactly. And I, and I love that. I absolutely love that. One, he told Emma, we're screwed up. Let's not do that to him. And two, mm -hmm. he went out there and immediately bonded with his son and took charge with his son because that's what he wanted as a child you know it precisely I, I, I love it oh yeah i i'm just getting the feels here uh because that that's exactly it and i yeah i that oh gosh it was so awesome i that wasn't this was another episode it was like the crocodile where we were anticipating this so hard because we <laughs> we were waiting for this reunion 
uh-huh. from the moment we knew that Balefire disappeared, what was, was it in, in the, uh, toward the end of season one, uh, that he, not only did he have a son, but he wanted to go find him. Oh, uh, gosh. But Biggles, I think one of your favorite lines happened a little bit after that, where Henry and Balefire were going to go get some pizza and... He says to Emma, do you want to say it about pizza? Uh, do I don't remember. Don't remember spot. I don't remember the exact words. Yeah. But uh, he was like, Henry goes, next, you're going to tell me the best pizzas in New York. He's like, no, it's in this faraway land. And he says where it is, like in the small corner of this faraway land. And he's like, no, nah, it's, it's in New York. Yeah. But That's then true. he says, the and then he pizzas says, in New York. Yeah. And then he says to Emma, Pizza is what it's cheesy, oh, it's warm, and, and it, it doesn't lie. Doesn't lie. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't lie. Lie. <laughs> yeah that's yeah. what I was thinking of. Yeah, I love that. And it, and it was like Emma, you you deserve that. Mm-hmm. Um, th- that was <laughs> that, that was probably one of the best burns that Henry did. Yeah. Um, yeah. I oh, like gosh. that. Like I like that the two people you have Emma, or I'm sorry, you have um, Neil and Henry in the front like bonding having a good time all smiles and then you have the two rejected ones walking behind yeah. them and <laughs> rumpel and emma yes yes and they're just I, like so like <laughs> like we're, we're both emma's, in the doghouse here yeah emma's like do you think we should follow them and he's like uh an invite would have been like uh reached out or something yeah I don't remember the yeah. exact words but yeah uh, it's a good oh episode. gosh it is. That that's well not, not spoiler alert how I feel about that episode. I, I'll talk, let's talk about that later. But and then when Hook somehow magically, I guess he sailed his, the ship there. So the ship all the way up there, found them I in New York. That, that was so- <laughs> that was something they really pulled out of their butt. Yeah, was really I thought, I was just cool. like, are you freaking kidding me? He sailed so- the ship there <laughs> because it's still right. It's still cloaked in magic, but. Isn't that only like in Storybrook? Yeah. Well, and the fact that he was able to do it. I mean, I remember when Hook shows up and stabs him. I'm like, where the hell did he come from? <laughs> yeah. And yeah. it's only, you just know, like, because he keeps saying, like, I'm a hell of a captain. I'm a hell of a captain. I'm a hell of a captain. I'm a hell yes. of a captain. So it's like, did you really? Because she finds, like, the map in his pocket. He sailed his, he sailed his ship here. Yeah, it's like, that, that, wouldn't be wouldn't I mean, people be can, watching this big huge pirate ship coming into port yeah, coming like, to New York City? <laughs> well, no, he probably wouldn't have sailed it in. Like he wouldn't have been able to sail it into the like the harbor. Well, then where the hell did he do? What did you swim in or come he, on his little, he, little pirate he just boat? Like, he, <laughs> a little buoy. <laughs> maybe maybe he took a ferry after he like parked it somewhere. Right, you could take a ferry. I, I guess, there. yeah. I don't know. That, yeah, that that seemed really off to me because I was like, okay, well, maybe the ship was cloaked in magic, but like, does, isn't that only in yeah. Storybrook? Storybrook? And I get New Yorkers aren't surprised by anything. Yeah. That's totally <laughs> cool. I I believe that in yeah. like uh when when maybe the way he was comes, dressed. Yeah, I believe that in the way he's dressed and you know going to when he ends up trying to bring Emma back because you know they they leave. Yeah. at the end of a season or when they all go back to the enchanted forest and then hook has to go back and bring back emma he's just there by himself oh, yeah, so i believe really that is. like new yorkers cool you know they they've seen yeah. everything seen but stranger. like this time it's kind of like ah but he brought right. his big old shit i'm going to head cannon this right so later on in the show we meet the dragon and the dragon has magic outside of storybrook so maybe because he didn't go through the state lines and sailed across on the water, the boat stayed cloaked. So he was able to go all the way cloaked and then find his way through Manhattan. And people are like, yo, there's a guy with a hook here. Maybe he's like a cosplayer or whatever. They're like, who cares? Like, we're like, New York just oh. ignore you when you walk on the, like, it's, it's, no one cares. They're just like, whatever. There's a dude with a hook. Who cares? As long as he's not trying to kill me, I don't give a shit. <laughs> and okay. He just walks in and he's like, hey, "Dream Shade hook, bam, right in the chest." I That's my head cannon. That's the head hey, cannon of Biggles. Big head cannon is of Biggles. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I I believe that <laughs> in, when he cut when he like sell, sells his ship 
and uses the magic bean to come and find Emma. That's yeah. fine. But this time he sailed to his ship. Like, he has a big, huge ship. Yeah, it's a big pirate ship. Yeah, and as Genevieve says, at least Hook didn't get a parking ticket. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, um, but it it really was because plot because they had to have Rumple dying, and then that's what woke up Balefire a little bit. Is, yeah, and he uh he says when they're back in Storybrook and he has uh Emma and he's like, okay, I'm gonna die. They're not gonna be able to find a cure, and he goes, I need to talk to Bell and. Balefire says to Emma, who's Belle? And she goes, your father's girlfriend. And the look on his face is like, what? What? <laughs> but that yeah. phone call, oh, that Rumbell phone call, when he's trying to, t- he's telling Belle, who's lost her memory, trying to tell her who she is. Mm-hmm. And he says everything that's great about her and what she meant to him. And then that's what kind of made Balefire say, you know, okay, and I'm still mad at you. And and he almost becomes like a little a, a little child again. He's very vulnerable because at the end of the day, he just wanted his dad to love him. And, yeah. and they have that little reconciliation. I thought that was great. Mm-hmm. You know, my head cannon doesn't work because they sailed the ship back. How did they get to the ship? How'd they know where it was? They do oh. sail the ship back. How do they know where exactly? How do they know where? Oh, I got it. Ship? I got it. Uh, Neil just automatically knows everything because he's been in New York for the longest time, and New Yorkers know everything. I know that. Oh From well, there you go. That are New Yorkers. Yep, they know everything. Perfect. Head cannon works. There you go. Yay, head cannon. Okay. Oh my gosh. Okay. Uh, sorry, just taking care of the situation. Oh, Decepticon raid party of one. Oh well. Well, thank you. I like party of one. Thank you, standing and brave Megatron. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah, I mean, all, all of that was, was really good and it was really dramatic. Um, I, I don't think we're going to be able to do justice to the Miller's daughter, but I guess I want to point out that how it all comes to a bit of a conclusion, this arc of the story, is Rumpel essentially tricks Snow into killing Cora. And I wanted to go ahead and hand that over to you, Biggles. How you feel about that? Well, you know, I thought it was cool. I was like, look, Snow's Snow really is evil, right? She like she thinks that, oh well, she killed my mother, you know, so it's okay that if I kill her because she killed my mom, right? Um and then she like kills him and then she, she's like, Oh no, I killed or I killed Cora. Yeah. Like, shut up, stop whining. Yeah. You did what you thought you had to do, and now you have to deal with your consequences. And she tried to kill herself. She's like, Regina, you can kill me now. And she's yeah. like, No, I'm gonna make you suffer by being alive and having to deal with your actions because your heart is black. Yeah, you've darkened and- your heart, you've darkened hey, your I- I thought that was awesome when she pulls out her heart and then when she sees there's black in it, the fact that Regina was like, yes. Yeah, I, I lo- like- Again, I love Lana's acting because she's she's crying mm-hmm. and she's rejoicing. You, I can have everything when she's holding that. Yeah. She's holding her heart and smiling and crying at the same time. It's so good. Yes. It's so good. Yes, it was. God. Oh, that that well, all of that. I just, I just adored that this aspect uh, of the whole plot, and then how when Snow r- r- d- does what needs to be done to murder Cora with the curse, and when Charming's look at her, it's like Snow, what have you done? And then you re- then it goes to where regina is so excited and she gives she plunks the heart into cora not knowing that that's actually what's gonna kill her and she's so happy she's like mother and now you all of that me. yeah and then and then cora for a moment right before she dies says you would have been you enough have been she finally realized because she had her heart back she had her heart back but yeah oh that was really intense but gosh the drama Holy crap. It was of that, so that good. At the very end. into murdering her own mother. Yeah, it was so good at the very end when she gets her heart back in and she's smiling. Oh. It's not an evil smile. It's a smile of a mother 
pretty much first looking upon her daughter lovingly, you know, because she took out her heart, like even before, before she was, Regina even was born. Yeah. yeah. Um, and this is like the first time she's really looking at her daughter full whole yeah. and then she dies and that's on it that on its own d is tragic yeah for cora um that on its own is tragic for cora because she thinks that she knows what she wants um yeah. and in order to get it she has to like rip out her heart you know she thinks she knows what she wants but in reality at the very end before she dies she's like you would have been enough. Like I was wrong. I, I that's not yeah. what I wanted. You would have been enough. This would have been enough. Like you and we would have been enough. And yeah. it's sad. It's so tragic. Yeah. Gosh darn it. This was so I this stuff was just badass. I just loved it. Yeah, we uh, haven't really talked about Cora, and she's the only character that has a chance to actually dethrone Hook as top character in this yeah. season. Yeah. Cora was amazing. Oh. Okay, well then I'll go ahead um, and I'll 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 go ahead and give you that floor. Tell me a little bit about Cora there. So you first meet Cora, I believe, in Lady of the Lake, right? Well, in this season, I believe the first one you meet Cora is the Lady of the Lake. Yeah, and she's trapped underneath, and Snow's knocked out. So mm -hmm. she's meeting Emma, and they're just talking, and she's like. Oh, I'm. Uh, I think she says she's Regina's mom. Or tells her that or something. Yeah. Uh, and then they're they're talking, and then Snow wakes up, and she's like, "Emma, don't talk to her. Whatever or however bad you think Regina is, this one's way worse, right?" Yeah. So, so they get called out to talk to Lancelot, who uh, turns out is Cora, it's and Cora is tricking them the whole time, manipulating them into getting what she wants and they go and they go to the uh their house it's, it, it's snow that figures out that it's cora that it's not lancelot yeah but she doesn't she doesn't figure out to the very end of the episode mm -hmm. but she yeah. has her inklings it's kind of i feel like she's had an inkling that something wasn't right about lancelot and that's why she's kind of testing him she she picked it up at the very end when she says something but like before that, she's like, I don't want to talk while Cora's around. But if she didn't think Lancelot wasn't Lancelot, then she did a really bad job of showing it because, like I said, Snow sucks. Snow is <laughs> the dumbest motherfucker I've ever met, right? Um, and she figures it out right at the very end. And it's already too late because they burn down the thing and Cora gets what she wants. And then uh, we find out the... The next time we see Cora, I forgot what episode it is. I don't have the episodes pulled up, and now I'm upset with myself. Yeah. Um, well, she's she she's but, working with Hook. Yeah, she's working with Hook. Let's see. Uh, is it at the end of the Doctor? I oh think no! Then is. you get. I don't remember the Doctor, so I'm going to ignore that. Uh, no, it's not. It's not the end of the. Is it into the deep? Oh the yeah, compass. yeah, 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 yeah. So she Cora gets the truck compass and into the deep where they go back and they try to meet each other, and Hook steals the. Oh no, wait, that's in Queen of Hearts. That's the next one. Um, and then Hook steals the heart from uh, Aurora. Aurora, which. He was supposed to use to kill Cora from Regina. So he has an enchanted hook that can grab a heart. And he gives it to Cora because all Hook wants to do is get back. So Cora's, yeah. uh, you find out the story of Cora and her mother and why she's the Queen of Hearts. Because of I what love happened. that she was the Queen of Hearts. Yes, that was bad. I love that she's the Queen of Hearts. My, my favorite episodes uh, are mostly Hook and Cora episodes. Uh, but I, I absolutely love that she's the queen of hearts. She has the mask. And you always wonder, right? Because this isn't the first time we've been to Neverland. You you wonder, like, who's Wonderland. behind the... Wonderland, sorry. Who's behind the mask? It's always, it's really creepy because the queen of hearts is, like, on this throne. There's people in front of her. And she has a mask. And she speaks really quietly into mm. this thing. And yes. only one person is always listening to him and interpreting what she's saying. 
Um, and it's real, it's always been very mysterious. And then finally she just puts it down and she talks to her. It's so, I love, I love, love, love that she's the queen of hearts because you know that if she's stuck somewhere, she will take over the land. Like she is that, I don't want to say powerful, but that like Badass. thirsty for power. Uh, yes. That she will take over whatever place she's at. Uh, in this case, it was Wonderland. It was so amazing. I like how, I love how Hook gets down on one knee and he's like, he goes, she's like, who are you? He's like, Hook. She's like, oh, yes. <laughs> Hook of what? <laughs> no, that was great. Yeah. But that was your favorite episode. So I'm going to steal it again now that you're done with that. Um, and they go to uh, the Queen is Dead, right? And you find out that Cora disguised herself as the Blue Fairy. And once again, we have uh, Snow being oblivious to being like, oh, why wouldn't you tell anybody? But, like, uh, that's child Snow. So child Snow is much more likable than regular Snow, right? So she mm -hmm. understands. But big Snow at the end is like, oh, I can't figure it out. I'm stupid. And then she figures <laughs> She figures it out as she's like crushing Johanna's heart, right? She's like, "Oh, yeah. you were the blue fairy." Well, no shit, <laughs> dead, right? Like, it's so stupid. But uh, <laughs> and then we get the Miller's daughter, where we find out that uh, Cora meets Ava's Snow's mom. Ava Snow's mom, who's a yeah. bitch. I would have killed her too. Oh. Word, Cora. <laughs> Hell yeah, Cora, you kill her. Uh, right? So you find out that Cora uh, has no heart. And the reason why she has no heart is because she fell in love with Rumpelstiltskin. Mm -hmm. So you're like, oh. And she's like, she took no crap from anybody. Mm -hmm. She was like, no. Even when she was, she's like, this child. And that's that what gained her hatred was Snow's mother. So yeah. un unlike Regina, she got her revenge and yeah. she did it. And uh, she just uh, uh, she just learned how to do magic because of the hatred of Snow's mother. And I, I'll complain about this when we get to season three. That happens because of uh, the Miller's daughter. I'll complain about it when we do our season three talk to if I remember it. I'll, I'll probably have to write it down so we do. But uh, the timeline's all out of whack. Because uh, Rumpel would have already known if she had a first child or whatever. Yeah, but suspension of belief. Uh, of just yes. on some of that. Yeah, because yeah. it was just so damn well done. But you find out how badass Cora is. And I, I forgot mm -hmm. about Dr. Hopper when she like... She frames Regina, which we already talked about, so I don't know if I need to go back over that. But she just, like, frames the murder of Dr. Hopper. She's like, I don't know who I killed. I'm new to this town. I just killed some random guy and pretended he or turned him into Dr. Hopper and threw him into the thing. <laughs> like, straight gangster. Like, Cora's yeah. just like, I am the best, okay? <laughs> yes. and it, she's just fantastic. The only one who can compete with Hook for best character, and I stand by it, and that's all I got to say. Yeah. No, well said, well said. What what I consider the the miniseries almost, uh, The Queen is Dead, the uh, Manhattan and the Miller's Daughter, it was some of the best of Once Upon a Time, easily. Yes. And, yes. and the way that they were able to also pull off with Cora with a younger actress... To Ooh. be able to pull it off, yeah. And of course, before she went a little BS crazy, <laughs> Rose McGowan. Yeah, Rose McGowan yeah. did a phenomenal job. Yes, she was so amazing. So good. It's like the perfect character to play. Because, again, like, I was binging these because we didn't, me and Biggles didn't start watching until season four. Mm -hmm. Um, But when they showed a young Cora, like, I was just like, oh, my God, yes. Like, they have yeah. such a good... Uh, a good eye for the actresses and actors on this show and like picking who was going to play the young one. Uh, oh God, it's so good. It was so good. Yeah. The only, 
actor that I ever had a problem with was Michael Raymond as Neil. I just don't know why. I just didn't like Well, that. he didn't look like uh, old Balefire. He, yeah, it didn't look like him at all. Yeah. Well, oh my gosh, though. When Cora says to Rumple, because he, he says, I just that I was always able to see things with my sight and all that, but I was never able to know, did you ever truly love me? So you could tell that he was still moved by that relationship. Yeah. You know, he was still maybe in many ways in love with her. And she said, why do you think I tore out my yeah. own heart? You were the only man I ever loved. Ah! Mm -hmm. And then she was going to kill him. I know. <laughs> Yeah. kill what you love but but yeah i that and now that her heart it. but she doesn't feel that anymore right now she just wants the power and yeah. he has the power don't worry every every woman who's ever loved me has tried to kill me so we're good oh, i know okay. the feeling rumple oh my gosh <laughs> yeah uh I, I just can't say enough about how well they did that whole core story and the whole miller's daughter and tied it in with Rumple, with Regina, with Snow, with everybody. It, it was definitely the best of Once Upon a Time. In my humble opinion. Uh, she's the anti-Rose Tico. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So you get brave, Megatron. Absolutely. All right. Rose so Tico greater than uh, Snow White. Definitely. And I, I want to give a little bit of an honorable mention to Lacey because Regina to piss off Rumpel for more reasons than I can possibly enumerate curses Bell to be the exact opposite of who she is. This big slut, this drinker and someone that gets off for lack of a better word on how evil rumple is it was yeah. the perfect revenge <laughs> and at She's the time so I was, the opposite of bell <laughs> exactly and at the time i was very annoyed with the character mainly because we were running out of episodes and i felt like they weren't doing it justice mm -hmm. but the episode lacy i thought was awesome and when at the end when rumple just finally says screw this i'm done trying to be a nice person it's not going to get me what i want this is the only way i'm going to have bell and he was almost being seduced by the dark side through yeah, yeah. her mm -hmm. and then when he starts just kicking the shit out of the the sheriff basically for you know kissing his woman uh basically and i and get goes, that oh yeah <laughs> Uh, and he goes, <laughs> she's like, you really are dark. And he goes, darker, much darker. And he just and turns the and beats the shit out of him. To, and I thought that was awesome. So I liked Lacey. I just didn't like the way they didn't take it to where they needed to, to do justice to the story. Because mm -hmm. they were running out of time. Yeah. yeah. They have such good... I feel like they have like really good ideas, but th the time management is wh where they lack. <laughs> where yes. They, because they have like really good ideas, but they're like, oh, we don't have a lot of time. So we're just going to be like, do this, but ah, we have to wrap it up in like another episode. You know what I mean? So it's like, that's such a good idea, but ah, we don't have a lot yeah. of time to do it. Yeah, I'm dark adjacent, says Soul Assassin. Hello, Soul Assassin. Welcome to Miss Smart Muses. Yeah, exactly. And I, I, I must say that the conclusion of the Miller's daughter, that was the last time in the entire show that they did justice and landed what they'd been building up to and giving it a satisfaction where it was perfectly paced. They brought it exactly where it needed to be. From then on out, it was exactly like you said, Steph. They had these really good ideas and just couldn't figure out a way to land them the way they needed to. Hey, the first part of season three, I think, is the best season of all of Once Upon a Time. Because Peter Pan is so good. Oh. Yes. Oh, okay. Let me let me contradict myself. Yes. Three A. Yes. Uh, I, I will grant you that. 
I guess I'm just saying that as far as something that had just really been part of the long con, like from the very first episode. Uh, but you're right. They do a fantastic job with the Peter Pan. And we'll get there. We'll, we'll get there. Um, because I, I did love that. But they were they had issues and i think we'll talk about that when we get into it precisely what with some of the issues and a lot of it i believe was studio interference but mm -hmm. yeah that yeah for several reasons there there was a lot of top down stuff like you got to have this character this this season you got to have that character this season we got to shoehorn the disney villain of the week you know we're coming out with a dvd we're coming out with a live yeah, action yeah. So you got to write it in so you would actually see that but um the and this is their the final theme and i don't think we need to talk about it too long because it it, it basically is self-explanatory the road to peter pan the road to neverland that everything from here on out was leading to henry getting kidnapped they needed to get henry kidnapped and they needed to have everyone say okay we all need to get together to go save, save henry. henry yeah and how they were able to do it with Hook, I thought they did a very good job. He he did a little, he did a little bit of a Han Solo. Yeah. Where he was like, I'm leaving. I'm not going to do anything. Screw mm -hmm. you all. Goodbye. But at the last minute, he turns around and says, damn it. Okay, let's go damn leave Henry. Emma. <laughs> yeah. And that fire died. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, because, well, because he's, uh, he thinks Bellfire is dead uh, yes. and he sees the, the little thing that he had carved with his hook, which was totally dope. Let me tell say yeah. uh, that he caught when he was, when he was, um, when Bellfire was on his ship as a young boy and he was yes. sort of teaching him how to be a pirate, teaching him how to sail. And he sort of has like this thing like, okay, I was going to help Bellfire, you know, for the sake of Mila because that's what Mila would have wanted. Obviously, mm -hmm. Mila would not have wanted me to abandon Neil's son. So let me go back. Exactly. And save yeah, him. that whole ties of fathers, sons, sons and daughters yeah. and mm -hmm. all, all of that. Uh, I, I thought that that was fantastic. And the way that Regina was finally got ever back into everyone's good graces when she decided she was going to blow herself up. To yeah. save Storybrooke. I mean, she made that sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And Belle gets her memories back. And then I, Rumpelstiltskin decides he's going to go and perhaps even sacrifice his life. For, for the, also for the sake of his, yeah. his grandson. I love when Belle gets her memories back. And yes. I love when she gets her memories back. Um. But I thought because you hated he didn't, he, right after. Uh, I love because he didn't want her to die as Lacey. That it wouldn't have been right. No matter how yeah. much he wanted that comfort, it wasn't real. That wasn't Belle. Yeah. You know? No. So he finally he made her drink it. He, he tells her it's like a shot or whatever. And uh mm -hmm. he needs her. He need he needs her because he lost Bellfire. And he, yeah, he has Belle, but it's not, it's not truly her. He really needs no. the love of Belle. And I, he's just like, I didn't want you to die as Lacey. And also he needed her because he lost Belle. Yeah, Belle so he lost I love her. when she gets, what? yeah, I love when she gets her memories back. It's, it's that, that scene is so good. Yes. I, I, I really did like that. I thought it was great. And then the way that but, she. I'm sorry, Winky Winky Woo. I am totally on board with you. I don't like Belle. <laughs> I'm not a Belle fan at all. I don't like Belle, but I like the scenes, some of the scenes. Yeah, well, and, and what it means. And the way, of course, Robert Carlyle, that man could act Robert, his way he's out. He's fantastic, yeah. Yeah, he just pulls it off so well. And, and then when Belle is seeing him off to go to Neverland, and he's like, well, you know, I'm probably never going to see you again. And she's like, no, I I will see you again. You know, nothing is set in stone and all that kind of thing. And I think that's also a really good theme to know is that, yeah, it seems like things are inevitable. It seems like, it seems like fate is written, but it's not really, isn't it? You know, that you can make your own choices. Mm -hmm. 
uh, I thought that was good. And, and, and I like the bro kind of relationship that developed in the season between uh, uh, Charming and Rumpelstiltskin. Like when he tries to help him woo Lacey. Yeah. And then, <laughs> that was yeah, so that, funny. that was, yes, that was awesome. And how like Rumpel is like, you're horrible at this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And and then when Belle's like, but how are you going to get back to me? And then the, the two bros just give each other a look. And then he's like, okay, you know, and he leaves them alone to have their moment. I thought that was great. Um. So, and, and then they go off to save Henry and, and that's a whole other uh, story, the whole Save Henry storyline. Mm-hmm. I I loved it. I thought it was a great cliffhanger. The, the way they got there, they kind of sucked because their pacing was off. But I know how much you adore that, though, right, uh, Biggles? You weren't too crazy about the final episode? Uh, yeah, the, the final season. episode was kind of lame. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that's because I think uh, the whole Greg and Tamara thing were lame. Or oh, wait, yeah. Sorry. Uh, oh, are we, yeah. we going to get into the one the, uh, the people that we like the the most and least here? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So I was going to say we're going to going to because we do need to start wrapping this up. We could go for another hour, but I just yeah. yeah. Can't, I, I can't. Uh, we we all have, have things and places we need to be. But I want to talk about our MVP. So let's. Let's first start about uh, who is the most valuable player. And I will let we, Steffi. We'll, we'll have to go with the second most valuable player because everybody's going to say Hook. Oh, uh, well, you don't know that. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, Steph. Hook. <laughs> Hook. 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 Okay. Hook. <laughs> okay, and I think we don't need any explanation. Okay, so he's your MVP. Who's your MVP, Biggles? Hook. <laughs> Well, I'll be damned. Okay, after everything though that I've said about Hook and everything that he was, I will stand by this, and I have it written in stone on our uh, the Once Upon a Fan website. Is my MVP for this season was charming. Okay, if you go for think, it, go for it. Uh, charming, this is this is charming's best season. So let's hear what you have to I'll, say. I'll, yes. I'll say, yeah, it is his best season for sure. Yeah, it is easily his best season. But if you look at the whole season now, I'm talking about the whole season, what charming does. First of all, he takes charge once you know Emma and Snow get themselves stuck over there. He leads Storybrooke. He gives his big, great speech about we are both, which gives mm-hmm. hope to everyone and lets them accept who they are. He becomes a fantastic grandfather. As Steph said at the beginning of the show, what a father to Emma, how he was there for her and he, how he hold her and hugged her and put his hand on her head. All of that stuff. That's how um, he hugs her throughout the entire series. Hand on the head of the baby. Yes, exactly. So he he's a great father to Emma, grandfather to Henry. He leads the people of Storybrooke, and he helps Snow through her issues. I know you hate her issues, Biggles, but she's such a crybaby, and she caused them all by herself. Like, <laughs> shut up, woman. Yes, smack but now why, why though? David why is David like, so her. good this season? Why is Charming so good this season? Because he less Snow. snow. He doesn't have snow next to him. You know, and I will grant you that, but he does bring her back. He does bring her back as a husband should. Um, he also ex- the, he he takes leadership with Rumpelstiltskin, even though he doesn't like him. It, mm-hmm. he, you know, when he, he helps him out with Lacey, he helps him out with some of these other situations. He realizes that they have to be a bit of a family. And when they all decide to go to Netherland, he is also at the helm. And he's r- r- ready to continue being their their fearless leader. I mean, he is a far better king than Snow ever was a queen, even mm-hmm. though he's not technically a king. So, and Josh Dallas does it exceptionally daughter. well. I'm sorry. He also scarred his daughter and his grandson. Like- oh yeah, <laughs> when they're having sex in the afternoon, <laughs> they're making tacos. Yes. Um, I should say that, yeah. We finally get to see him with his shirt off. That alone should probably make him the MVP. So I've got to give the award this time around to to Charming. Fair <sighs> enough. But we all know it's still Hook. Two to one, we win. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay. Well, let's say who is the the anti MVP um, Biggles. So I want to say Snow, but Snow has one cool scene where she shoots the the what's it called in the eye. The ogre. Yeah, but it's Mulan. Mulan is awful. I hate her. Go. <laughs> They make her even worse in season three. Just beat her with a rock over the head until she dies. Come on. She needs to go. She makes Snow look good. Uh, Like, I don't know how you could do that, but (laughs) all she does, like, they're like, do this. Okay, I'll do this. And then she, like, has no character at all. She's just, uh, like, okay, I'll do what I'm told. And then she's like, oh, no, I have have to do this because of uh, Philip. Blah, blah, blah. How do you ruin one of the coolest characters in all of uh like the disney lore mulan is badass but you know what they ruined her in the live action and they ruined her in this no justice for mulan uh it hurts me and there should have been mushu okay mushu should have been in there they should have rehired eddie murphy and life would have been good wow I, that was epic by the way Biggles. <laughs> That is my well rant, okay? That's someone I dislike more than Snow White, okay? Right there. Wow. I I, I can't disagree with you uh, at all. I, just here, here. Steph, who is your anti-MV3? <laughs> um, it's a tie. It is a tie. Greg and Tamara. I, I think that they're so <laughs> freaking dumb. Uh, Greg's story in the show is just like so stupid his reason for coming back you could have just had tomorrow and just settle it like it's dumb i hated i i didn't hate them but like they were they were useless characters i know that they were used to kidnap henry and usher in neverland but i just i i didn't like their characters at all no no did not like their characters at all i thought that uh it could have been done differently uh, with two different actors or just Tamara on her own, just have her do this on her own. I, the actors um, that they were, that played it. <laughs> I'm so glad that they were, that they were gone. Like immediately they're stupid. Yes. They were, uh, they're honestly stupid. They are legit stupid characters. Like they are dumb as fuck. Um, and I, I do not like either of them. Uh, one of them is just like, where's my dad? Where's my dad? He's he's a child. He's a grown man, but he is a child. And it's so stupid. I think both of their characters are dumb as fuck in this. In this At uh, least Greg got us more uh, Sheriff Graham. Oh, that's right. true. That, that's that true. is true. That's the only good thing out of so all. Tamara of is worse. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Tamara's <laughs> awful. They're both awful. Like, yes. I think that he did he, just bring them in. He didn't need to have a whole backstory where he like met Regina and they were camping and they had yeah. uh, what a his waste fa- of where did his father go? Where is his father? Like, He's are you, dead, you know, they could, him. yeah, she, but like, why did she kill him? It's so stupid. Like, these are his bones. They're not his bones. Oh my God. So stupid. And then like, literally they're like the home office. You called the home office. I called the home office. The home office wants to do this. The home office wants to do. Th- oh my God. They sound, they sounded ridiculous. They're dumb. They are so dumb. And like, they're working for faceless people that they don't even know who they are. So stupid. So stupid. Yeah. Yeah. I have to agree with you, Steph. I definitely hated them more than PMS Mulan. Um, talk about what I was saying about they had so many things that they needed to wrap up and they wasted so much screen time on those two idiots. Yeah. And something they could have done in like five minutes. See, if they, if exactly, if they wanted, if they wanted us to consider them true villains like real villains then wrap up all this shit with with aurora and mulan and stuff a little quicker bring them back home a lot a little sooner than you did because it's like because it's like they get home and they immediately holy shit this is gonna happen it was so abrupt uh it was so just like one i didn't like it like they introduced tamara and it's like okay she's uh 
Neil's fiance. And then she learns that everybody's in a storybook character and she doesn't even take pa. She like totally, oh, cool. Wouldn't you yeah. think that like your fiance is an idiot or really creepy? You didn't, I wouldn't believe any of that. I mean, she, she literally needed like no convincing. I would well, be like, well, she was a counts. villain. That's why she knew it was. I, all I know. True. Yeah, I know. I know. I and that's why it. I was just kind of like, did nobody but Emma realize that she's, a villain, like well, nobody just well, takes pause that's, and wonders. That's like, another reason why, why I on hate earth, um, why on earth, like she just accepts it right away. I would be like, this town is suffering from some sort of psychosis. What are you guys drinking? What is in the water? Mm -hmm. I'm leaving. Like, if you wanted, if you didn't want to marry me, then that's cool. Uh, that's fine. But you didn't have to go this elaborate in order to convince me that you don't want to be mar well, married well, to me. You know what I mean? That. Like, I would, she I would be taking that. so many. I, I know that, but like she just like so quickly does a 180 and just believes everything. I would be really terrified. They brought me back to this town. And was like we're all fairy tale characters. Like is this some sort of street theater? What are you talking about? I would have um, believed it. <laughs> I would have yeah. been like, fuck yeah, that sounds awesome. <laughs> but yeah, and I, I get it. I get it that no that Greg that and that Greg and his dad are like, oh. It's it's what Regina's missing, you know. They she wants a child again. It could have been done so differently. Yeah, it, 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 they, they just wasted spent so much time. They wasted so much time. They could have uh, just I, I didn't gave like a follow hook all the time, and we would have yeah. been happy. Yeah, and and that's why in in, in many other ways after the Miller's daughter, the the season kind of went downhill. It, it, yeah. it was like they they lost their bearings uh, for sure. Yeah, but I, I yeah, because they were just kind of like, we need a way to get to, we need a way to get to Neverland. How can we write that? It, it, oh. Exactly. Here's an and, idea. And yeah, it, it, I think someone said, uh, if I missed it, uh, oh, Michael's Asylum said the actors for Greg and Tamara were known from other franchises. Yeah, I, and another you can see actors, they were just suffering from unfortunate uh, timing right. and fortunate all sorts of stuff. Yeah. So it. It was a real pain in the arse. I, I am mm -hmm. completely with you on that. And, I mean, and that whole backstory about how, like, Tamara knew Pinocchio. Did we really need that? Like, oh, okay. Let's talk about that for a second. It, how, go the anywhere. Hell, how the hell does a taser work on a dragon, first off? <laughs> and two, if she did hit uh, Pinocchio with the taser, he probably would have caught fire and not have passed out from it. Right, yeah. so he could have just like bitch slapped that bitch across the the trailer and been like, I just studied Storybrooke and been like carried her out and just been like threw her in the middle of the street and Storybrooke and been like, here's your villain and just like take a piss on her and walk out because that's mm -hmm. all they did with that character is fucking piss all over the floor. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, well that episode I think if I were to say what the worst episode of the season was. That that was that mostly, episode. It was that episode. That, that was the dragon. And you talk about something that didn't go anywhere, didn't even mean anything. And then at the end, they, gosh darn it! I mean, they they make Pinocchio go back to being a, an eight year old. I mean, that was just that was up. so stupid. Oh my god! Like, like, are you kidding me? He just lived me. a life. <laughs> Does he yeah. have his memories from when he was older? Like, no, he yeah. doesn't because the, that's so dumb. Well, then, that, but. Oh, that that. Oh, and that, then that later was... they reverse it anyway, so it doesn't even matter. I it was so messed up. Yeah. All right. Well, how about your favorite episodes? What's your favorite episode, uh, Biggles? I don't know. Crocodile, maybe uh, the Miller's daughter, maybe Tallahassee. I don't know. There's three episodes that I can't choose between. Yeah. Okay. That's I'm the fair. same way. I loved. Uh... Uh, the crocodile. I love the Miller's daughter and the uh, oh god, what is it called? Hold on, um, Queen of Hearts. Queen of Hearts. Okay. Yes, I love those three episodes. Right. I can't choose my favorite. They were so good. Well, fair enough. Yeah, they were all. Those were all really solid. For for me, I just have to lay it all down with Manhattan. I still think that that was just my ultimate favorite episode of the whole season. Add that to my list of four. Yeah, that's a really <laughs> good episode. Yeah, er everything about that episode was perfection. Uh, love that episode. It's probably my top 
easily in my top five of the entire series. Uh, I I love it just because everything came together with them finding Balefire, with the, uh, the Balefire finding out he has a son, all the stuff with the flashback when Rumple like you know, breaks his own leg for his child, and then thinks that Henry's gonna kill him and all that kind of stuff. It's just a perfect episode, so I love that. Um, and I think we all said we all agreed that the dragon one was the worst one. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. think so. Well, you know what? I don't really like any of the the Frankenstein episodes where he has like the drinking problem or whatever. I didn't mind those. Like, yeah, the black and I, white episodes. I was like, you can't I can't believe you wasted two episodes on freaking whale. Like Yeah, but it was interesting. It, it, led to I, nothing. I, like, it didn't really lead to anything really. Like the first one, yeah, you get Regina to ch- shoes that she loves. That right, that's all you get, right? And I guess mm-hmm. you guys, you girls get your uh Prince Charming teaching Henry how to prepare a horse or whatever, or take care of a horse. And then the second one, you just have like they're all like, Oh, you gotta save this guy because uh we need to, and then they're like <laughs> then they're like, they're all like, just let him die. We're the good guys, let him die. And you're like, this is fucking stupid. Get rid of this fucking episode. What a fucking waste of airtime. Give me more Hook. Oh, and boy. Like, and literally Hook's like in the thing and she's like, the, I need you to answer these Obviously, Obviously, those are filler episodes, but the worst of the filler episodes was the dragon. Oh, gosh. Just shoot me now. I, I, I can't even think about that episode with season. wanting to give up the, what was it, at least 15 Padmes of losing the will to live. <laughs> Oh gosh, what a mess! Um, I think someone commented earlier. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm not getting to some of uh, all of these comments. These, these are there's a great conversation going on in the chat, and and I I love seeing it. I love seeing it. But uh, I believe uh, maybe a soul assassin that had said you all are really passionate about this show. It's like yes, we are. This show does that to people. This show drives people crazy because <laughs> it's so damn good. It, it really is. Yeah. It really is. Um, it. Someone uh, does Pinocchio's cat appear? No. Uh, thank God. Yeah, the soul assassin who asked that. Um, Genevieve uh, said, "Did I catch? Did I miss Genevieve?" Uh, one uh, comment. If I did, Genevieve, I am so sorry. But um, she's been. Uh, she had a question. I think about. Charming. Oh, the fact that Charming. Oh, yeah, Char- Charming and his family, or whatever. The fact that they, he was going to have the biggest <laughs> Christmas dinner ever, or something like that. It was crazy uh, because it is. It it, it, it it's unbelievable. He, um, well, the the line is. Uh, could you imagine if we had? Uh, or no, it's. Uh, so they go over and they say your grandmother no actually it's uh it's his great grand or step great grandmother and then they say and his gold is his grandfather thank god we don't have thanksgiving in our world yeah that was a good one that was a good line. oh yeah <laughs> yeah that was a classic that was a classic okay i found the comment about genevieve um i wonder how in all the realms did prince philip get out of the soul sucker uh, the, i don't we, we don't know I, yeah i can they didn't tell, tell us ready he just showed up out of it later it, it happens off screen. They go to wherever uh, they keep the souls. They go there and they're just like, you can come out now. And he comes out. That's how it happened. It, it, exactly. But you're right, Genevieve. All of a sudden they're like, hi, it's Balefire. Or they, they didn't realize who he was. He showed up on the beach. And I'm like, how the fuck is Philip out? Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're like, he has the same clothes as Emma had. Clearly, you're from their world, and he's like, "I'm the son of the Dark One." Yeah, yeah. Oh, the G- uh, JT Gunther says I stopped watching after first season. Never good. Get hooked. That's because you didn't have hook yet. So you can't uh, get hooked. Yeah. Hook. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this random comments coming on screen. No, that was just me uh, searching through, and some of them were popping up because stupid. Stupid blankety blankety blank computer. Uh, Soul Assassin said the power of plot devices save their souls. Yes. And Genevieve said, I wonder if that connected to season five. 
Uh, oh, maybe, maybe he was stuck in the land of untold stories. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, hey, there, there you go. You did a better job than the writers. Um, there Alex McCarthy, my wife got I me hooked once upon a time. Now I've seen the whole show five times more than her. Wow, well done. Ah, yeah. So six. Oh right. gosh, now five my times is... more. I don't know. Yeah, five yeah, times more. Six times. <laughs> five times more. We don't know how many yeah. times that she's watched it. <laughs> uh, uh, Michael's asylum says. Hit plot armor is universal. Yes, it is. I yes, could have wrote is. the show better, by the way. Yeah. And every episode would have had Hook killing someone with his hook. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is that even though um, season two had its issues, especially toward the end, it was nothing compared with what happened later. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember sometime around season four. 4B. I was like, give me the worst of season two any day over this. Sh and that's just all there is to it. I don't remember anything after the Ice Queen happened. Yeah, that was. And I don't. I I really dislike Camelot, and I dislike. Uh... Well, actually, I like Dark Swan because of how good she looked uh, with the darkness. Um... Oh. <laughs> but. Uh... And Hook was like, what the hell? What the hell? What the hell? Like, he was clueless. And then he's like, oh, I'm evil. And then you get old Hook back and he's just like, "It's that's good. That was the only good part of that entire season was once Hook realized he was the dark one. And yeah, then, that you're right. That was the best part of season five. And then 6A sucked ass and then the dark oh, fairy gosh. came. And that was kind of bad. But... The ending, like I say, it could have ended at six. You didn't need seven. They should have even ended though, it at six. Even though I like seven more than I liked five and more than I liked most of six. Six um, A was one of the worst things they've ever done. And I don't even remember it, what six A was. That's it, how bad it was. I, I, I try to forget it, but it, it's basically what killed the show because they never recovered from that. But I digress. Okay, we do need to go ahead and wrap this up because I actually do have to actually go to work tomorrow. I took a job. I'm insane. So um, I love talking about this with you all. And everyone in the chat, you have been amazing. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for coming in. We are planning to do Season 3 on the first Thursday of february i believe but before we leave uh, let me see biggles biggles where can we find you and what's going on you can find me at twitch.tv slash biggles mets or biggles underscore mets uh i play D, D every wednesday we just started our new campaign yesterday so we are on episode two next week uh you can also find me at youtube dot com slash biggles mets no underscore on that one and tomorrow i'll be posting a vid or actually i won't have time to post it tomorrow but uh i'll be posting a video of a shortened version of our first campaign saturday i'll be doing a live stream with some of the people on my campaign so we'll be doing a lot of D, &D stuff so come check that out okay there you heard it there please go ahead and go ahead and subscribe, watch, share, love, and oh, look at that smile. Okay, great. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for being here, Biggles. And how about you, Steph? Hello. Uh, you can find me on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, as well as Twitch, all at My Nerdy Home. I'm about to go live on Twitch after this. So, yeah. Okay, Enjoy. so everyone go ahead and yeah, raid the shite out of her. Go over there and do that. Yeah, thank you for my med, uh, my meds for my. <laughs> thank you to my meds. I want to give an honorable mention to my medications that have helped <laughs> through this stream and through my life. But also, thank you to my mods. I see you throwing out the the links. I do appreciate you, and you've been great. Also, helping us with those stupid Russian spots or whatever the hell their problem is. And you can find me here, obviously, on Miss Martin Muses, where I we're continuing on Saturday with the Two Towers discussion. We're going to finish that up and then go into Return of the King uh, at 11 o'clock Central. Also, this Tuesday, we're going to start a new show, The Fantasy Tavern, with Lady Gravemaster and Steve Kenobi. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I'm excited. Are you talking about D&D stuff there? Uh, sorry? Are you talking about D&D &D stuff there at the Fantasy Tavern? 
Oh, okay. um, we might. We, actually, we might. Uh, we're starting with Narnia, but I th I think that hey, there'd be a lot to I say guess. about D and D. I know that both Lady Grave Masters and Stieg feel very strongly about some of the additions and some of these changes, and I think that that would be something definitely worth talking about, as well as the deep lore. Absolutely, I'll I'll throw that to them. I think that would be a great discussion. But yeah, we're going to start with Narnia. We're going to start with Narnia, the Chronicles of Narnia. So please go ahead and set your reminders, like, share, and subscribe. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm loving your comments, by the way, Chad. I'm trying to finish up the stream and you all are cracking me up. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. Have a great day, everyone. Have a great day. And be certain, be certain, if you have a show called Once Upon a Time, don't waste a whole bunch of episodes with Tamara and Greg.